All right, we are we are live. Can you hear me, Rocco? I can. Okay, perfect. Well, hey, well, welcome to the Ryan Ripken Show episode. It's not even an episode; it's a special. We are running around right now, and we apologize. We appreciate all of your guys' patience so far. Are we good now? Perfect. Can't explain and and appreciate your guys' patience with today's date. Uh, so much has happened. We just left Camden Yards, and I mean we just left Camden Yards and just had an exclusive sit-down with uh, David Rubenstein, the new owner of the Baltimore Orioles, and Calvin Edwin Ripken Jr. But for right now, because we need to get back for our guest, Rock, and that is yeah. one of the best out there in the business, mm -hmm. and he's a, got the Baltimore connections. Let's bring on Mr. Tim Kirch. And Tim, thank you for being so patient with us today. Uh, my, but my How are you? Was I'm good, and I've been through what you guys went through today about a thousand times. The number of times I've been told, interview at four, and then it happens at 7.30. You do whatever it takes to get it done. I'm proud of you guys. You know what? I think on a different time, you're going to have to teach me some tips and lessons. And I know <laughs> that both of us have had those moments with my father, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. The number of times I waited for your father to be done signing autographs or getting whatever else he was doing, but it was always worth it in the end. And it will be for you guys today also. Uh, I, I, that's our hope. That is our goal. And as we continue to try to set up for the rest of the night, Tim, let's start with this. It's, it's opening day Eve at minus the Dodgers and the Padres, right? Already happened. But let's stick to Baltimore here specifically. And you know the ties. You know the connection here. It was a very historic day in Baltimore sports. David Rubenstein now has taken over as the owner of the Baltimore Orioles. And just maybe you can just touch on kind of the impact this is going to have now and moving forward for the team. Well, first off, no matter what happens in Baltimore, opening day is the national holiday in the city, as it should be. People take their children out of school for opening day. We should, no one should have to go to school on opening day, if you ask me. And now, it's so much better in Baltimore because new ownership has changed and in comes a guy who not only has a lot of money, he seems to love the game and he loves the Orioles. This is a perfect combination. This is what every owner should be like. And it's, we've gotten away from this a little bit, fellas. We've got corporate ownership now where you never even see the owner. When the owner shows up, he's in public and he tells you how much he loves the game and the team. Everything's going in the right direction now for the Orioles in part because of ownership. And <laughs> I hope he's got a lot of money because there are some great players on this team that need to be signed long term eventually. Yeah, and Tim, you just touched on it right there with the players who do need to be signed long term. Will Smith, he gets an extension today with L.A. A lot of people had their eyes out on that and that extension. What do you think David Rubenstein's philosophy will be on keeping these cornerstone players, the Adleys, the Gunners, Jackson Holiday, when, it, when it's his time, when he comes up to the show here in Baltimore for the long haul? Well, I think he's smart enough to recognize that when you look at the Braves, who've been really good for at least five years and are going to be even better for the next 10 the best way to do it is to lock up your players long term. What that does is it sends the best possible message to your fan base. When we draft a player, we're going to keep that player. And maybe you save money in other spots. But you guys know that you win with homegrown stars. It's the best way to build a team. It's the best way to build a dynasty. So if I'm David Rubenstein, I'm thinking, how can I get the catcher sign long term, the shortstop sign long term, and Jackson Holiday sign long term? It's going to cost like Shohei money. We all get that, but that's how you have to do it if you're going to win. It's it's definitely, and that that's kind of the recipe. Not that you can't win without spending. It, it, it's it's true. Look at the Rays. The Rays find a way to continue to win, and they the Rays throw out a lineup. It feels like Tim, and and all of a sudden you go, yeah, they're not going to have as much of a chance this year. And there they are at the end of the season. It feels like they're right in the race now for the Baltimore Orioles. Some of their their the switch on this just to talk about contracts for a second. Some of these young Orioles are are uh, represented by Scott Boris. And right now, specifically with what's just happened, Jordan Montgomery did not get the deal that everyone thought he would get. Either did Blake Snell, and, and the list goes on. Do you think that trend's going to 
is it going to have to change here, or is this kind of an anomaly given the situation? Well, Scott Boris is the greatest agent of all time, and the reason people don't like him is he usually wins. But in this offseason, he didn't win quite as often as he usually does. But when you deal with a Boris client, you have to recognize he is going to want that guy to go to free agency because that's where most of the money is. This is where the young Orioles can really help and David Rubenstein can help to have a Steven Strasburg type of situation. Not a perfect example, but he went to Scott Boris and said, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay here. I don't want to get to free agency. I want to sign now. And he probably took less than he could have gotten, but he stayed with the Nationals, ended up winning a World Series there. And that's what the Orioles have to try to do is convince Scott Boris and everyone else that the best way to build this team is not let these guys get even close to free agency, get them locked up long before that. Tim, there's so much excitement, especially after what the Orioles were able to accomplish last year, winning the AL East for the first time in years. Then they win 101 games, lock up that one seed in the American League. For this team, coming off such a spectacular season, one where they're continuing to build momentum. I know it's a loaded question, but how far do you see this team going in 2024 with the pieces they do have right now? Well, they're good enough to win the World Series now. That's how good they are. Number one, they have these incredibly young, dynamic, hungry players that we've already talked about. But the big acquisition, obviously, they went and got an ace in Corbin Burns. Fellas, you guys have seen him. Ryan, these are the days that you're going to say, I'm glad I don't play anymore when you watch oh, yeah. When you watch a cutter at 97 miles an hour from this guy, he is fearless. He's a great teammate, and I hope he stays with the Orioles long term for their sake. But if he's pitching for a contract, that's exactly what you want. You needed him at the top of the rotation. I saw the other day, fellas, on one of these prediction things that the Orioles are going to win 83 games. Was, was, is that a joke? Are you kidding me? This team is so talented. It is moving in the direct, right direction at such a high rate of speed. I think they're the best team in a very difficult American League East, and they may not win 101 games again, but they're going to be a better team this year than they were last year, especially when they get to October. Yeah, hey, I couldn't agree with you more. I think people underestimate – or maybe they they don't appreciate how hard it is to win 100 games. So what the Orioles are doing, who knows that they're going to win 100, and 100 plus this year, right? Oh. The goal is to win the American League East. The goal is to get back to the playoffs and go further on. And you're right, Tim. Burns is cutter. Burns, if you can throw a cutter like he does, <laughs> it's terrifying. I can, I can attest to it. I hated a pitcher that threw a really good cutter because then you feel like it might just go right start at the middle of the plate. And that thing's running in and almost hitting you is what it feels like. And that's why a guy like Mariano Rivera or Rivera all those years ago as the closer could manipulate the ball, throwing just fastballs and be that successful. Uh, Tim, I think you brought up that and you think the Orioles are obviously going to have a good year. We do believe as well. They have so much depth. Well, let's just talk about the rest of the American League then, or at least in the American League East. If there was a team to challenge, and now there's questions with the Yankees with who that's going to be or what's going on, because the Garrett Cole situation, do you still think that a team like the Yankees is the best challenger to Baltimore, or is it one of the other teams that we might not be talking about enough? Well, this division is so stout, four teams could win the division. But I think the Orioles are the best team, and I was certain the Yankees were the second best team until Garrett Cole went down. Fellas, you know this. He's the best pitcher in the game. They couldn't have won 82 games without him last year. And I don't think they have a truly, truly reliable guy behind him right now in the rotation. Now, there are all sorts of possibilities, guys who might step forward, but I'm worried for their sake about their starting pitching. But I still think they're a playoff team because they're going to score 200 more runs than they did last year. Wait, wait till you see what Juan Soto does to that lineup all by himself with his pitch selection, his ability to hit the ball the other way, his ability to take a walk. And with him and Aaron Judge, if Aaron Judge plays 150 games and Soto does what he does and Verdugo and other guys fill in, that team's going to really be good offensively, but they're going to have to be to slug through um, their pitching issues until Cole gets back, which may be June 1, let's say, but it can't be much later than that. Otherwise, they're going to have a really hard time making the playoffs. 
Tim, we've talked so much about who is on the team and the potential of the current roster with the Orioles, but a big surprise to many across Birdland, but who didn't make the opening day roster, and that's Jackson Holiday. Were you surprised at all when, when you didn't see his name on that opening day roster? Did you understand Mike Elias's thought process with keeping him down in AAA for the time being? Look, I understand these things. He struck out every three at bats. He needs more help against left-handed pitching. He really needs to refine his game at second base. Having said all that, he should be the opening day second baseman for this team. They told him, if you play well this spring, you'll make the team. He played beyond well. And you guys know this, especially you, Ryan. You watch him. Every motion he makes on a baseball field is fluid and athletic. He is a dream to watch. And with that gene pool from his father, younger brother, and everything else, I would have started him at second base every day and said, we're going to take a chance because this is a contending team. You can you can keep a 20-year-old in the minor leagues to get him some extra work so he's ready. But I think he's ready now, and I think they need as much help as they can get to be as good as they can be this year. You know what? I think a lot of Birdland is either going to be fired up, angry, mad, wants to run through a brick wall, or all the above after your explanation there, Tim. But that is the question. There's no denying the talent that Jackson Holiday possesses, and no one can have a potential higher ceiling on the team than maybe one other player. And Rocco knows how I feel about him. That's Gunnar Henderson. I really think Gunnar Henderson can be the dark horse to win the MVP this year behind guys like Soto and Judge. But the time's going to have to... We're going to have to wait a little bit longer on the time. And for the Orioles, it feels like Jackson Holiday's time is not a if, it's a it's a when. Um, Tim, I, I guess moving around a little bit, is there anything that as far as when I try to tell people this was something that happened in spring training and we've had conversations and you've been around so long to understand how each player needs to get ready a certain way. People were worried about Corbin Burns. People were worried about – uh, how certain Orioles were hitting in spring training. This isn't just the Orioles, I'm saying. This is all baseball players that go, oh, wait a minute, why aren't they hitting 300? And so many of these young prospects were excelling. Now, the prospects were doing all that they needed to do to try to make an impression. But, Tim, as you know, and I wanted you to say it to our audience, spring training means something differently for each player, and especially for veterans. They have a different kind of objective when it comes to getting ready. Right. And I never pay attention to spring training stats for veteran players who are completely proven. They are not there to hit 300 with seven homers. They're there to get their body in shape. When the games actually count, everything matters. I'll never forget when each row came up. This is 2001. You know, Lou Pinella, the, you know, the really impatient manager of the Mariners at the time, he like whispered to me, all this guy does is hit soft singles to left field. So he went to, to each row and said, can you do anything other than hit a soft single to left field? And each row said, yeah, I can hit it really hard over there if you want me to. And Lou said, well, go hit it really hard over there. And each row, of course, goes on to win the Rookie of the Year and the MVP. I don't worry at all about veteran player stats as long as they're healthy. Corbin Burns has a 10 ERA. I don't care. I promise you on opening day when he starts firing, everything changes when the games matter. Thank Tim. you, Tim. I appreciate that. <laughs> there you go. That's that's all he wanted. He just wanted someone to agree with him, and you're, you're the guy, Tim, so we appreciate you for that. As far as – this is kind of non-baseball related, Tim, but you're from the Maryland area. That segment with Scott Van Pelt with the Baltimore names, I've watched it over and over and over again, and I'm sure when you come back here, you get asked about it all the time. And to that, I want to ask you this. It doesn't have to be a sports name. What, what is the most Baltimore name that you have ever heard in, in your lifetime with that accent? Because I just think the people here, they, they appreciate that so much, that segment especially. And people here, they do sound like that and talk like that. So it's, it's understandable why you guys had so much fun with that. It's great. 
Yeah, well, look, the lesson is we're covering sports for a living. You're allowed to have a good chuckle once mm. in a while. And, you know, there are people in your life who will make you laugh no matter what they say. Scott Van Pelt is one of those. He is the master of all accents, dialects, impersonations. He's hilarious. This is how bad it got at one point. I'm walking through the grocery store. I'm in the frozen food aisle. A total stranger comes up to me. He doesn't even say hello. He just says, can you please ask? Ask Scott to give the name for the women's soccer goalie for the World Cup women's team. That is Hope Solo. So I I actually am taking requests now that I pass along to Scott Van Pelt. Fellas, I've covered baseball for 44 years. I've done some pretty good things. I swear to you, more people react to Scott Van Pelt and me than anything else that I do. I'm not sure that's good or not, but I'm here for a good laugh once in a while because as we know, Ryan, this is the hardest game in the world to play. And if you don't have a good laugh with it once in a while, it will tear you to pieces no matter who you are. Yeah, you got to enjoy it, and that's great. I honestly, that we love it. I think yeah. the people love it. That's why. Even if you're like, "Why the hell do you love this?" But they do because it makes them feel that they can relate to the people, and that's why. With with when it's you and uh, Scott together, you guys are so relatable to the audience. That's what makes you guys special. You mentioned something. I'll get you out of here on this last question or thought. You said you've seen a lot uh, in the baseball world or in, in experience a ton, but now you have a different experience. You're experiencing something through a different lens. You and your son are starting a podcast and the first episode drops tomorrow. And that to me, I maybe just, just spent time with my father. That has to be one of the, the cooler moments now in your career. Oh, it is the coolest moment in my career. Look, my dad and I were as close as a son and father could be. And now I've got a chance to work with my son, who's 30 years old. He is a music talk uh, show host in Philadelphia, country music talk. I used to call it country music. He had country Western. He said, dad, it's country music now. It's not country Western anymore. Not the point. He's always wanted to work. We've always wanted to work together. And now we have a chance to do it. So the first episode is tomorrow. They are, it is a joyful, playful celebration of baseball. It is a Valentine to all baseball fans. We're going to have chuckles all the way through it, but we're going to talk about some stuff that hopefully is entertaining, educational. And I, I can't wait to for this thing to drop tomorrow because I'm doing this with my son. If we make any money on this, that would be great. I don't care about that. I've always wanted to work with my son and this is my opportunity. That, that's amazing. And we're going to continue to push that out there. I can't wait to listen and watch again. I think it's just something that's so special. And again, you guys just have so much knowledge about the sport. So I cannot wait to see, but Tim, I appreciate you being so patient with us tonight. Appreciate that. I am causing all the issues. It's not Rocco <laughs> this time. It's me, Tim, but we'd love to have you on more talk more about how the pods going and the baseball season, because we can all agree this baseball season, there's nothing like it. So, Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, My Tim. pleasure. Call anytime, fellas. Enjoy you're the it. man. My dad Be calls it country western as well, so you're not alone. <laughs> Appreciate you, Tim. Be careful what you wish for, Tim. Have a great night. <laughs> okay, take care. Tim Kirch and everybody. That was that was fantastic. Nice. We're, 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 we're running around here. Well, and if you're new to the channel here, we're, we're still trying to set up. There's Zach. We appreciate you. No friends between the lines. Uh, that might be a staple or maybe a motto here for the Baltimore Orioles here in 2024. But been fun. It's been a great time. Uh, we are. We do apologize for running a little bit late. Big day today, Rock, as you know. Uh, um, yeah. Awesome stuff. Uh, I, by the way, he brought something up which was hilarious. The first time I got here, I was called Rocco DeSangro by somebody, and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. And then I immediately went and watched that clip. So shout out to Tim. I think he's backstage right now cracking up so we can see that. But, but what a guy. Thank you again. And, uh, yeah, big day for baseball here, though, in Baltimore. It's awesome stuff, man. Yeah, there, there's so many different parts. And we're going to tease out what just transpired here at Camden Yards. Had a chance to go behind the scenes and sit down with Mr. David Rubenstein, new owner of the Baltimore Orioles, and a guy that used to play baseball, Calvin Edwin Ripken Jr. Might have heard of him. Sometimes I call him dad. Uh, sometimes I call him other names if we get into a little bit of an argument. But we have a lot more planned on this Orioles special Wednesday here, okay? We move some schedules or some things around, and our next guest, again, has been very patient. 
And he's also an absolute Orioles legend. And what I love is that I've gotten a chance to get to know him as an adult. I actually work with him with the baseball warehouse. And Rocco, I know first off, do you if you got to get going with your stuff, you can go ahead. What's your timing? Uh, I got to record something at 720. But listen, I, I don't want to miss the beginning of this. So we, we perfect. Gotta, well, then we'll bring him on. We have another Orioles legend. Yeah. He actually was a part of that 1983 Baltimore's team. He was the MVP of the World Series. And I get to do when I'm doing my baseball work, doing camps and clinics. I've had the pleasure to work with this man. So let's bring in Orioles legend Rick Dempsey. Rick. Hey, thank you, Rocco. Thanks, Ryan. Oh, my God. I've never heard you on radio before. You're awesome. Well, hey, and they, you know, shock's on you. Well, <laughs> wow, I'll tell you what. That's pretty it, cool. Well, that's great. And we're actually getting our whole team together here for a second, just so we're not surprising you. Rick, we got Rocco there. We just got back from Camden Yards, and then my yeah. one of our other co-hosts is Zach Bollinger. Oh, that's not Zach. Um, There's Zach uh, Bollinger I am. and Kevin Ostriker with us. So this is the whole team that makes it work for us, Rick. But, oh, man, I'm all over the place. But glad to have you on. First off, Thank how you. you feeling? Uh, a lot of news just broke. We just read Camden Yards. Just your kind of overall sense and take as it's moving in kind of into a new era here of Baltimore baseball. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, they busted on the scene two years ago, you know, uh, really turning that win-loss record around. And then last year, 101 wins. And doing what they did all season, nobody expected that. Nobody did. And now you look at this ball club, Ryan and Rocco, uh, they've made improvements, even though uh, their number one guy went down on the first day of spring training. Um, they've made improvements that make everybody feel pretty comfortable that if, if he doesn't get back on time, don't worry about it. Get yourself healthy and ready to go. We've got enough uh, strength in that uh, starting rotation uh, to make up for it. And that's what excites me more than anything now, you know. With, and back in my day when you had Eddie and Cal and Singy and uh, Lowenstein and, uh, and Gary Renicky, when you had those guys, you knew we weren't going to have a lack of power, guys who could drive runs in. It was uh, more of a worry on defense for me. And so just be as sharp as I can. And I'll tell you what, I learned uh, a lot about catching when I came to Baltimore. Um, I had the fundamentals down before I got there, but but working with your dad and listening to some of the old school things that he brought up, you know, it paid off for me uh, and, and helped me to have a very long career at the major league level. But your pop saw the little things about catching that made a difference. And uh, it, it helped me uh, to take uh, my career, you know, other places other than Baltimore to the Los Angeles Dodgers. We won a World Series in 1988. And uh, that was a team that was all backup guys. Mostly we only had three or four regular players you know, with Kurt Gibson and, and Steve Sachs and a few of the others. And that was it. And, uh, and we ended up beating the Oakland A's. But Man, I learned so much uh, in Baltimore. Uh, it's my baseball home, even though I played for six different teams, uh, because they knew how to run a baseball team. Earl Weaver was not the most fun guy, as you know, to get along with. Uh, and neither was your dad, too. <laughs> oh, I, I don't don't mess with him on the field. That is I for know it. I know it. You, don't take him for granted. I'll tell you what. He will wake you up in a heartbeat, which he did. <laughs> But you know what? That's what I liked about him. I liked about him. He, he was all about winning and playing the game the right way. You know that. You probably had to put up with it uh, during your your days with him. Granddad was pretty tough, probably. <laughs> but I, I absolutely loved him to death. Uh, and, and on top of that, uh, if Earl Weaver, even though he was tough, I really kind of loved him, too. Hey, Rick, thank you so much for joining the show. It's great to talk with you, especially Thanks, on, the, on the eve of opening day. It's an exciting time here in Baltimore. As you know, yep. you've gotten to experience plenty of these over the years. Oh, and yeah, and I, I want to I ask you, so sure. from 83 to now, and I know you probably get asked this question a lot, but you know what it takes to win a World Series. You know what it takes, that chemistry, that recipe, that team belief. What similarities do you see from that 83 team being around this team in 2024 that leads you to believe they can accomplish that ultimate goal and hoist that trophy high in October, November? 
you know, I don't think we had as much power or um, offensive ability um, back in those days as this ball club shows me that they have now. And they keep producing good young players who adjust very quickly to major league pitching. They've been outstanding. And, you know, I think it was Henderson that got off to a slow start. But look at the adjustments he made and came back. I remember a young guy, <laughs> okay, call him dad if you want, Ryan, but he started off uh, pretty slow and it was pretty tough for his first 30 or 40 at bats, you know. I don't know that he had one or two hits the whole time. But, you know, he adjusted quickly and then became one of the most dangerous hitters in the game, you know. And on top of that, he was smart. He learned the game on defense and, uh, you know, still one of the best shortstops, although he didn't have a Mark Belanger speed. He, he thought the game out as perfectly as anybody could do. And look at the record that he set most games played um, in, in, in a career. And he was incredible, you know, uh, made himself a great, great player. But, you know, the comparisons, uh, I, I like the direction they're going. They just don't seem to be intimidated, Rocco, by anybody. They'll put up big numbers against any team. You make mistakes with these guys. And there's something about them that I think is a little bit better than we were in 1983. We thought the game out. We played the game together. You've got to be playing the game together. These guys can go up there and smack the hell out of you if you are if you don't make good pitches. And I don't see any teams that are going to be able to handle the Orioles going through this season. Hopefully, they stay healthy. That's the goal. Key is health. And I know yeah. right now the arms, they can get healthier, but this lineup – it's deep, it's talented, and they can do a lot of damage. And, Rick, I, Zach's got a question for you, and, he, and it's a must-ask question that I think you would appreciate, especially from what you've gone through. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Rick. Uh, first, sorry, I didn't get Rocco and uh, Ripken's uh, memo about the suits, so uh, we're, we're rocking this. But, you look uh, good, man. Keep the microphone you. right there. You can't read. <laughs> <It says enough. laughs> You can't read your an inscription on the front. It says yeah, no effing. Uh, I, I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh. no friends <laughs> between the lines. I mean, I mean, Rick, you're kind of right there. It's, oh, it's wrong. Uh, oh, wrong one again. Go Sorry. On. You you are right. Uh, if you're saying it's saying no friends between the lines, so but you can say whatever you can call you know enemies whatever you want. No effing whatever works. But anyway, Zach, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you joining us, Rick. And as someone who obviously played the catcher position I think obviously I think one of Adley has one of the prettiest swings in baseball but defensively how important is what he does you know even impacting the pitchers just how he calls a game and one thing specifically is how rare is it between innings you see Adley he always goes out and greets the pitcher and has something what makes him special in that way well that exactly what you said that's the one difference uh, that separates Atley Rushman from every other catcher in Major League Baseball. You don't see the communication between those guys. There may be on the bench, there may be in the clubhouse, but Atley takes it out on the field also, especially at a time when a guy has struggled a little bit, made a couple mm -hmm. of tough pitches, things fall in, you know. Atley's right there to keep him in the moment that you need him to be in. And every catcher knows that when a pitcher loses confidence, that's when you've got to be there for him. You know, and one thing in baseball I don't like today, I'm totally against it, is they hire young high school and college people to come in and work with the pitchers in between starts. That's where you learn everything about that pitcher, where the release point is. It's all about the release point. I don't care about the delivery, where, where you want to come from, underhand, overhand, sidearm. Everything, but it's the release point. And once a pitcher throws a couple good balls in the bullpen with that release point, then you go on to your other pitches, you know, and that's how you help a guy during the game because when he loses it, he's got to be able to trust you're going to come out and say the right thing to him that's going to get him back on track right away, whether it's speed up, slow down, get your arm up, you know, get your balance, you know, quit tipping to the right or the left and all that kind of stuff. You know, it, it makes a difference. You know, I know that from 1988 playing with the Dodgers. I, I was a backup catcher to Mike Socia during that season. But we had Tim Belcher, Tim Leary, and a lot of the other guys in the bullpen, you know, the young guys that would get off track. They had great talent. 
Uh, I even told Tim one day, you're the best five inning pitcher in baseball, yeah, but you better come up with another pitch if you think you're going to pitch here for very long. And overnight, he came up with a split finger fastball. And, wow. you know, things like that make a difference in a guy's career. And then he goes on to win 100 games so fast. I didn't even know he was there when he called me. What are you calling me for, Timmy? Oh, I just won my 100th game. Oh, my God. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, you know, that, that's why you develop relationships. And that's where Atlee Rushman has the edge over uh, all, all the other ones that I have seen. They may get along with them, but Atlee has a special relationship with every guy out there. And that's what I love about his rapport on this ball club. I don't like any of the catchers, the way they go to one knee all the time in in, in baseball. If they're all going to do the same thing. Antley Rushman's still number one with me. But that letting balls go to the backstop and guys get extra step jumps and trying to steal. I mean, in my day, uh, Cal Ripken Sr. would have been pretty upset with me if I was doing something like that. So, <laughs> But in today's uh, uh, baseball game, Antley Rushman still remains the best for me. Yeah, his connection just with, like you said, yeah. the pitchers is just so special and not something you see every day in the league anymore. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> one of a kind. That. It's it's it's. But you know what, Rick, and and I know you because you have an appreciation for those catchers. But a guy, the backbone to me, besides we're looking at the positions. Obviously, we know the importance of shortstop. We know the importance of having an ace on the mound playing center field, but the backbone having a catcher like that for so many reasons can shape yeah. your team. And a lot of people give a comparison recently to about Buster Posey, and you can say, well, Buster Posey, when he was on the Giants, people believed that they could win. And you could say all you wanted, he was one of the best players on the team, but he commanded and really brought a leadership in so many other ways to the team that benefited the Giants that Adley is doing for the Orioles. I think we have another question about, and Brad, who was helping me out, Rick, so you'll meet Brad here in a second. But I think he has another question about another highly touted player that the Orioles have, but necessarily not necessarily is in Baltimore. <laughs> that's right, uh, Rick. So I'm I'm like, oh, I gotta fix my camera now, but that's okay. But Rick, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. And uh, what what better person to ask uh, a, a, a question about catchers than than the great Rick Dempsey? So I appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you for that. Of yeah. course. Listen, um, a lot of Birds fans. Uh, really kind of upset that Jackson Holiday is not going to be starting an opening day. Uh, yeah. But I, I kind of made the argument before uh, it was even kind of talked about as far as, you know, there was a lot of assumptions that were made uh, about uh, J Jackson Holiday actually going to be starting the way that he played spring training. But I kind of made the argument that he struck out a lot for one, didn't play a whole lot of triple A ball. And it, it kind of made a ton of sense to me that he wasn't going to be starting opening day, but I am certainly open to him starting, you know, kind of like in a similar way that Adley and yeah. Gunner did. And it, it kind of seems as if that's more the the likely trajectory, trajectory. And even though a lot of fans are kind of upset that he's not starting on opening day, I think that they'll be happy that when he starts later on in the season. What are your thoughts on that? I think every player has got to learn to uh, adjust to disappointment. You know, uh, being sent back to the minor leagues is no fun. Believe it or not, even though I got 27 years in pro ball, 24 in the big leagues, I got cut six times. You know, oh, <laughs> and, yeah. so, and sent back to the minor leagues briefly on, on a couple of those times. But, you know, something mentally, it helps you to be stronger and you've got to take it that way. Um, I know he's got even Adley Rushman. Look at Adley. You know, when everybody really wanted to see Adley Rushman in the big leagues, no, Mike Elias and the ball club decided to let let him stay where he is right now till he gets totally healthy, totally mentally prepared to come to the big leagues and play like they know he's capable of playing. And, you know, sometimes it's a sour, uh, sour bite, uh, and, and, but it pays off in the end. And you've got to look at the track record of the way this organization is doing things like that, and you have to respect that as a player. You know, you have to say, okay, they're setting me down for a reason. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play down there. Now go down there and get yourself ready to come to the big leagues and be a productive player, not just somebody that comes in, that, you know, struggles to get uh, control uh, of, of his attitude, of his at-bats, his defense, whatever it might be. But uh, take advantage of it the way that the guys that made it to the big leagues the last couple of years ahead of you, their approach too. And then when you get there, you're going to fit right in like a, like a brand new shoe. 
Well, and he's so young too, right? He's got plenty of time. I mean, there, there's no reason to, to rush it. So I 100% agree with you. Yeah, let him go down there and be a, a big fish in a small pond and right. and get that confidence and then come to the big leagues and see how these guys adjusted. And they don't seem to be a cocky team. They seem to be a confident team. And that's what I like about them. But there's always that that old saying that is going to stick with, you know, every season that we see uh, as baseball players, ex-baseball players, whatever. Hitting will win you a lot of ball games. There's no doubt about that. But pitching and defense will win you the championships. And it's never going to change. I don't care how much they try analytically to change that around. It is never going to change. We're going to put that up on the wall, Rick. Pitching there and defense go, wins championships because people should know that. And I've grown up with it. I heard it all the time because that's the reality of it. If you go out there and you can stay in the game, and the team that executes the best, Rick, as you know, that's the team that's going to be in the game. Not necessarily how many runs you can drive. It's how can you execute when the moment matters most. And typically, that's when you're throwing the ball and when you have to catch it. And that's hopefully what the Baltimore Orioles will do a lot of this year. We'll wrap up here in a second, Rick. But yeah. can I just ask you a question? Sure. Can we expect to see you come back and give the big old O chant, the Orioles chant soon? What are we thinking? Yeah. Do we want – do we – I mean – no one, I, I I love my dad. Please love, love Calvin Edwin, but <laughs> but we're gonna be honest here. No one seems to get the crowd fired up like Rick Dempsey when he starts chanting and and you are just out there doing your thing. Yeah, well, Eddie was cool and Cal was cool, but Rick was a little crazy. Yes, <laughs> That's awesome. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself cool all the time, but you know, it's, it's harmless. As long as you're winning, you can get away with anything. You know that. That's mm -hmm. how I got away with the tarpec running around in the ring because we were always winning. Um, your dad was a guy I always kept an eye on and because if I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing, I could read it on his face. <laughs> and so then I knew to stay away from it. But um, no, Calinetti are what they are. They're icons. You know, they hit home runs. They drove in runs. They were strong defensive players. They were, they, they, you know, I had my bad days. <laughs> I had some good ones. Always seemed to be around playoff and World Series time. But um, I struggled a little bit. But those guys commanded a lot of respect from the fans. And I'm sure it just wouldn't have been their personalities to get out there and lead Orioles. Or <laughs> I got up on the stupid dugout one time and did that myself. But. A lot of the fans liked it, so that made up for a lot of my offers. <laughs> well, hey, hey, you know what? You got to bring the energy. You got to keep believing That's when right. things aren't going right, and no one seemed to keep their mind. Even if you didn't show it all the time, yeah, I know you could be frustrated, but you went out there and still did your thing to help the team win. And Rick, you're—I mean, you're saying all these guys, yeah, Eddie did well, my dad did well, but. Rick, like I said, at that time when the team was trying to win, you were that backbone being the catcher, and a lot of people in Baltimore still recognize that. But I look forward to doing more camps with you soon, clinics, yep. lessons at your place. The building's beautiful. I've really enjoyed getting a chance to work at the baseball warehouse. So we'll 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 plug that out for more people. If you're looking for some lessons, you're looking for some camps, we got some options and we got some places for you. But anything let else, me, Rick, before I let you go? Yeah, yeah, let me say this one thing before I get off, you know, because – I was there at the Rick Dempsey Baseball Warehouse when you were giving your, I, I don't know if it was your first lesson or what, you had the young high school kid who was a sophomore. I'll tell you what, I know good hitting instructors when I see one, and, and I got to give you a big compliment. I, I love doing it on your show at the same time, but my oh. God, you were incredible with that young man. He did everything you said. His approach was perfect, and I've never seen anybody rocket a ball in the batting cage like that young guy did. So, and you were a big part of helping that guy uh, mature a little bit. So I'm, I'm anxious to see where he ends up by the time he's uh, finished being a senior in high school. But congratulations on that. I really enjoy having you around. Well, I appreciate it. And you know what, though? This is the thing I've learned is that you let, as, as now being on the other side, is let, let the, the players find out who they are. You know, and that's all I'm trying to do. But yep. I do think we have a lot of knowledge, and that's why it's fun to be able to give back. And hopefully all the mistakes I made, because hand up, I've made millions of mistakes, especially in baseball. So why not help this next generation on stuff that I didn't? But, Rick, I appreciate the compliment. 
we got a lot more planned and we will make sure that everyone knows about it but you enjoy the rest of your night evening and uh afternoon whatever wherever you are i appreciate you rick and we will talk soon okay all right ryan thank you very much and thank you guys for having me on hey Hey, thank you thank you thank you everybody Better keep clapping, Kevin. Kevin, don't stop clapping for Rick. I can't hear a thing, but I'm clapping. Yeah, I'm, good. <laughs> I'm doing the behind the scenes work on a very special. Y- you are, and you know what? I I, I want to give a quick shout out to the group real quickly. You guys, uh, and I'm talking about my team with 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 Brad. Obviously, I went to, meant to go the other way. But I tell Brad, you what, man, I am like sweating like a dog. We're gonna run around like crazy today. <laughs> we we have we we really have. We've been trying to get everything going, and we're gonna put out what's been going on. We had a chance to go to Camden Yards and get a one on one exclusive. Before everything comes out, we're going to have a chance for you guys to listen to Mr. David Rubenstein and Cal Ripken Jr. talk about the situation. And the situation is that the Orioles are now uh, – the ownership, the deal has been approved. And it's it's officially a new chapter in Baltimore baseball. But I also wanted to point out these guys here, Zach and Kevin, grinding, <laughs> grinding – for the guys, for the boys, for the team. Guys, thank you so much. Yeah, and I will say, just in regards to, you know, what's coming up, Rip killed it. Absolutely killed oh, yeah. it. It was incredible. So it's it's going to be exciting, and I'm, I'm excited for everyone to get to see it. It's so hilarious because, like, the way that it works, for, for those of you at home, like, uh, Kevin and Zach could hear the entire interview and see everything that we were seeing. And they just had to sit back behind the scenes. But like in our private chats, like Zach was going bananas <laughs> as, as, as Ryan was giving the interview. And, you know, it was just awesome. It was a great atmosphere. We were at the warehouse. It was just, I mean, if you just told me a year ago, even three months ago, like we would have done that. I would have told you you're crazy. So Ryan, you did an incredible job. Guys can't, can't wait for you to see it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we got a lot of incredible. clips coming out and obviously the full thing will be up, but, uh, yeah, Ryan did an awesome job, and you're, you're going to want to tune into this one because I think uh, it's a really insightful listen, just not only into the Orioles itself, but into just the city of Baltimore in general. So yeah. it's going to be it's going to be really cool. Yeah. I, I can't say I was losing my mind a few times. Kevin watched me jump <laughs> up and down yeah. while Ruben Zach, Zach was, was screaming for a solid two minutes about one, one, one thing in there that I'm sure he's, he's going to use that clip forever oh, yeah. and ever and ever. <laughs> it really was. And again, I just want to tell you guys how much I appreciate it. Thank you all. And, and this is something what you're going to see also in the interview, we're not going to give as much away, but people, there's a lot of people that care about Baltimore. And I, and I, I think that that was definitely felt. And also for us, and especially right now, we haven't touched on it a lot right now. We will touch on it in the future, but everything that just happened with the bridge with the Francis Scott key bridge. You can just feel it. That was a moment in Baltimore and Baltimore is hurting, but you know what? This community is so strong. There's so many people that care for one another. And it's a reminder with today, just how many people, the connection is the Baltimore Orioles. How many people love the Baltimore Orioles? And this hopefully is going to be a new age and, and hopefully a great age of baseball for the Orioles. But guys, we got another, our next guest. We've been running over and over and over again. Um, so why don't we bring him on? Because it's again, this is a interesting situation for me, or it's a pleasure. And it's also coming full circle because when I was a kid, he was teammates with my dad. Now I'm older and we are doing not only camps and clinics to, with Rick Dempsey in the baseball warehouse as well. We're also uh no, your teammates. Yeah, we're teammates on the on the airwaves for 1057 the fan. Yeah. We're gonna be at Pickles Pub tomorrow doing it. So let's bring on the former Oriole, Mike Bordick. Hey, Bordick. hey. What's going on, guys? <laughs> What's up? Forty, how we how we doing? Happy uh, opening day eve. I know you've been running around, but I appreciate you taking a little bit of time. No, absolutely. Just got done with some lessons, actually, Ryan. So there you uh, go. Hey, that's what I live and love to do. So it was great to be over there and help some kids. Uh, you know, appreciate this great game of baseball. Yeah, it's it's been um, it, it's great, and that's what I try to tell people, at least with. The, the staff with the ball, the baseball warehouse. I mean, when you get to learn from guys and have fun and, and also guys that have been around and the reason why you're doing it is not because you need to do it. It's because you want to help. And I mean, I'd want if, if Mike Bordick said, Hey, I'll help you out. I'd love to do that. Hand up. This guy knows his stuff. Rick Dempsey knows his stuff. So I, it's been a lot of fun um, to be able to do that. You know, opening day tomorrow, butterflies excitement for players it's always a fun time you just touch on the atmosphere something that you always appreciated as a new season is set to start for this new version of the baltimore orioles 
Yeah, may, may, maybe the best uh, time of the year, you know. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest uh, holidays to be celebrated, opening day in Major League Baseball. It's, it's a rebirth, if you will, uh, for everybody. So if players uh, struggled last year or if young guys get an opportunity for the first time to make it to the big leagues, you get a start over, a redo. But there's so much excitement coming into this year because of what the Orioles obviously uh, did for themselves last season. Uh, winning the American League East, 101 wins, uh, pretty impressive stuff. And it's about the same group of guys uh, with the great addition of, of Corbin Burns. So there's a lot of excitement um, coming into this year. But me personally, you know, as a player, I, I just loved opening day. I loved the adrenaline uh, that surrounded it. I loved the hype of the city. It didn't matter what city you were in. Everybody, I think, appreciated the start of a new season with the hope and, and optimism for a successful campaign through 162 games. Um, this year is pretty special, though, here in Baltimore with new ownership coming in. Obviously, uh, so many great young players in this organization and uh, just a lot of excitement and optimism going around it's going to be fun to be a part of it and share it with you tomorrow down at pickles pub yeah are you fully ready for this Bordy? let me see if i can get back on here there we are are you, are you excited for this because it's going to be popping down there i don't care if it's raining or what's in the forecast birdland's going to turn out and, and the fun thing that i like to do is i get to just talk ball with you and bob haney uh you got your notes you you what i always love you were always prepared you got your notes ready for tomorrow <laughs> I wrote down some notes today because I know tomorrow is just going to be a free-for-all, right? So, uh, yeah, I got, I got a few notes written down. But, hey, this team is really easy to talk about. Um, everybody had success last season. Of course, the rookie of the year with Gunnar Henderson, he's going to be a showcase uh, feature, I think, on this season. Because if you ask me, and I'm sure you agree, uh, this guy's going to be in talks about MVP I feel, for, for many years to come. Adley Rutschman, of course, the, uh, one of the best catchers in the game right now, an incredible leader uh, really to help you know, keep this, this great rotation in check. Um, he's so much fun to watch back there and how he communicates with all the pitchers, uh, both starters and bullpen guys. And plus just a slew of young players, the excitement with the depth they've created now in the minor leagues. I think so many teams that are successful – they always fall back on their minor league systems. And the Orioles have had a very strong minor league uh, system for a number of years now. And now if you look at the number of players they have in AAA that arguably should have a shot here in the major leagues and probably would be in the big leagues with another organization if it weren't so dang chuckerbock full of talent at the major league level right now. So, you know, guys like Colton Kowser, uh, busting through, had phenomenal springs, so much fun to watch. And he, he's going to be a guy that I think is really going to establish him this, himself this year at the major league level. I don't want anybody to get hurt, but, you know, Austin Hayes uh, has his stretches where he's not out there for a full season. So, you know, Colton Kowser will definitely get his at-bats and, and help this team, uh, hopefully, to another 100-win season. That'd be great, right? Wouldn't that be great to see back-to-back 100-win -back seasons? Extremely challenging, but I think this team, one thing they do not lack is depth, and I think that people don't understand. If they maybe outside of Baltimore don't fully understand, the people in Baltimore understand how much talent is just brewing in this system. And if you're new to this channel, hit that like and subscribe button. A special Orioles special we had earlier, Tim Kirchin on, Rick Dempsey. Now we got Mike Bordy. Mike Bordick, I just call him Bordy. I got sorry, I got carried away. But <laughs> hit that like and subscribe button. It's opening day eve. We're talking about the Orioles. And actually, Mike, uh, Zach here has a question for you. All right. Hey, all right. Bring it on. Mike, thanks for joining us. As someone, I guess we'll stick with the prospects at the moment. So as someone who played shortstop and stuff, can you talk a little bit about Jackson Holiday and the transition to playing second base in the majors? Because a lot of people you know, seem to think that, oh, you're just moving over in the infield. It's obviously not that hard. You know, you can just plug and play guys. What is it like to switch a position and even just something as simple from shortstop to second base? How difficult can that be? Yeah, it's not as easy as it seems. That's for sure. I, I will say this. I think for years now, shortstops have been considered, you know, arguably the best athletes on the field mm -hmm. that have the ability to have that versatility. And I know 
when, when they told me when I was in the minor leagues that the only way you're going to make it to the big leagues is if you learn how to play second base. Initially, it was really hard just looking at everything from a different angle, understanding how to turn the double play at second base. It's kind of a blind uh, turn. Yeah. Back then, guys could take you out at second base. So you had to learn how to use your feet, uh, how to get out of the way, how to take throws in front of the base. But it seemed like Jackson Holiday made that transition very smoothly this spring. And I think he's an incredible athlete. Um, is he better suited at shortstop? I think that's kind of yet to be seen. I, I think a lot of guys have to earn their stripes. Listen, mm -hmm. Gunnar Henderson wasn't the yeah. uh, starting shortstop right out of the gate either. And everybody had him slated right there at third base. And if you ask me, I think ultimately that's where he's going to end up. And he's probably going to go down as one of the greatest third basemen in the history. But who knows? He could stay at shortstop and ended up being one of the greatest shortstops in the history. So um, you love the athleticism. And I think the Orioles are really, you know, in a great position with that because they got a lot of great young players that have that kind of versatility. You hope that, you know, it doesn't get into Holiday's head. I, if mm -hmm. you ask me, Every one of these young guys have shown their true character guys where they want to do whatever it takes to help this team win. They want to be a part of a successful organization. And I think Jackson Holiday is no different. And we may hear some things that might sound a little different. I think Jackson Holiday will do whatever it takes to be in the big leagues and try to help this team win. I think he fits in with everybody as far as the makeup that they have found and created. And uh, it's pretty exciting to see. But I was impressed this watching him this spring, how smooth and easy that transition seemed for Holiday. Just a great athlete and could probably put him anywhere on a baseball field. He is a baseball player, and I think he would have success anywhere on the diamond. Yeah, kind of like you said. I mean, he might be starting shortstop on a lot of other teams on opening day, but unfortunately for him, he's got Gunnar Henderson, who we've said – on this show before we think is a very big dark horse to go win the MVP this year. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to crack yeah. the uh, starting lineup and take over shortstop. No, no absolutely. I, and I think Gunner kind of proved himself that second half of last season. Listen, I thought Mateo was arguably the best defensive shortstop I've ever seen. And then just kind of some inconsistency showed up with the bat, especially, and they let Gunner slide over there the second half of the season. And I was, blown away with how he handled himself out there and really this goes with all the young players they are just unflappable they bring their lunchbox to the field every day they get their work done they're prepared and they don't get caught up in the hype or anything they just go do their job and they do it very well they really do it, the work ethic of the these guys and there's a reason why they're having so much success one you got to put the time in Yes, you have to be talented. That does matter. But you have to put the time and effort in. And you also have to try to push each other. And in a way, you grow together. This group has grown together. This, this uh, They say it's a core. But the reason why every time with all these injuries that happen, boarding and the same thing, I've talked to the guys down there. And I go, you guys, how are you guys feeling? And I already knew the answer. But are you guys worried with the injuries, with pitching, or what's going on? Nope. We're ready. We, we're putting in the work. And since we put in the work, we don't feel like we got to go out there and do anything differently. So it's going to be really fun to watch. Brad, I think you have another, the next question. Yeah, for, I got two. First one, uh, Mike, th first of all, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. Uh, first question is, what kind of dog you got? <laughs> she's a freaking labrador. She, no, she's a newfie doodle, newfie doodle. So she's a big freaking <laughs> barking dog driving me crazy right now. And I'm wondering why nobody's letting her out. <laughs> so, what what is that mix what is the mix there a, a newfoundland which is a oh, big a, oh, snow wow. dog and then the doodles because they're hype you know they shed. you know they don't shed they're, yeah 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 you know, you know my, my mom's got labradoodles and they bark like crazy like that all the time so i feel your pain yeah. um but never, nevertheless <laughs> worse than a barking dog I hate <laughs> that just won't stop you know yeah. Uh, yeah. But nevertheless, listen, uh, Ryan has gone on record saying that he thinks that Gunnar Henderson can be in the running uh, for MVP this season. You have said the same, and I'm not here to make the argument against that. But what I will say is, is that we've seen this time and again where, you know, you have rookies that come in and just light the world on fire, right? Seems like they can just hit everything. But then that second year or even even that third year where adjustments can get made from other teams uh, and you start to see a little bit of a, a falling off and not again, not to say that Gunner is going, that's going to happen to him. But I think that there is that question of like, 
what is Gunner, Gunner, Gunner going, going to have to do in order to be able to make that MVP, pu- MVP push? Yeah, well, uh, that's a great question because there does, there does seem to be sometimes those ups and downs, those ebbs and flows with players. I'll tell you what maybe arguably the best thing that could have ever happened to Gunnar Henderson was how bad he struggled at the beginning of last year. I mean, everybody was saying, listen, you got to get Gunnar out of here. You got to get him down. His confidence is waning. Get him in AAA. Let him get his confidence back and bring him back up. And he worked himself through that. He understood what he had to do to get back on the baseball, to have better at bats, make the adjustments on the fly, which is being more aggressive a little bit earlier in counts. And next thing you know, he took off. Uh, what he ended up with 28 home runs, um, you know, hit 255. And that was after absolutely scuffling for a month and a half in the big leagues, almost two months where, you know, everybody wanted him out. And I, me included, I was like, listen, he's a young player, man. You got to get his confidence back up, send him back down the minor leagues, bring him right back up. But, you know, I think of players like Nick Markakis did the exact same thing when he was yeah. a young player, struggled, struggled, then struggled. And everybody's like, get him out, send him back down to the minor leagues. And Terry Crowley was a hitting coach at the time and stuck with him and said, he will be fine. Turn things around. What do you end up with? Tw- almost 2,500 hits, I think in the big leagues. So, you know, just an incredible player. And I think, those kind of little setbacks, uh, long enduring early in their career setbacks, you know, really bode well for su- consistent success. He knows what he had to do to make the adjustment, and I think he's on that right now. And I, I think he's going to get off to a good start, and you're going to see his numbers just – I think they're going to skyrocket. I am with you, Bordy, and I am with that. And anyone out there that's a betting man for it, the odds for Gunner, you know what? If you're feeling frisky, I think you should take a chance at that because the kid is special. One thing that we do not do know for sure, the Gunner, ha- Gunner Henderson special. And I told these this, Bordy, and you've heard me say this, but I've had two, and I'm going to say it because it's a show of my language, I had two oh shit moments in my career, okay? Because in the minors with it, I played with two organizations, the Nationals and the Orioles. The first one... I had was with the Nationals, and it's a player that's now in the Yankees. His name's Juan Soto. I was Soto's teammate, and I remember watching him, and you looked at him, and you went, you are different. What the hell are you doing at 18 years old? And then he goes on at 19, 20 years old, helps the Nationals win a World Series, and now he is one of the best players in the game. The other person, we're at the oh shit, Gunnar Henderson, because we're on the backfields, Gunnar Henderson hits an opposite field home run over the the, uh, uh, netting behind left field, and he's a right-handed hitter, so opposite field home run, hits it over the street, hits it into the neighborhood on the other side, and no one says a word. And I'm sitting there. I think the only one someone goes, hey, good job, Gunnar. Good job, Gunnar. The dude just piped one to the other neighborhood at whatever age he was, and then the rest is history. He was a guy that I saw that refused – to uh, to give in to mediocrity and physically talented, he's one of the best. So I'm really excited about his future. Bordy, you mentioned Mateo, and I got to talk about this because I always thought his spot was locked for the team. And some people were like, wait a minute, you got to bring these prospects up, bring them up now. This is a pet peeve of mine, by the way, too. When And I think it's unfair at times to these players is that the expectation for prospects is that you are going to be better than already solidified big leaguers. I'm not saying specifically Mateo in this case, but I want you to first talk about how the challenge of trying to adjust from being a prospect to being a bona fide big leaguer, and then why Mateo still has so much value for this team in 2024. Yeah, I've been a big Mateo fan for for a lot of reasons, and and I I think now he'll probably show more versatility, uh, which I think – ultimately could be very beneficial for him. He could probably play another 15 years playing both the outfield and infield because I think he's still very trusted to be able to handle shortstop as well at the major league level. Listen, uh, a couple years ago, this guy was doing things where I, I just couldn't believe where he was making plays, how he was making plays. His range was off the charts. Uh, he steals bases in, in clutch situation times uh, when you need him to steal some bases. I think he's a highly impactful player on the defensive end and, you know, the ability to steal bases when you need it. And I think that's what kind of set this team apart. They have a couple speed guys uh, that really can wreak some havoc, you know, on the base pass and put instant pressure uh, on the defense. So if Mateo doesn't get a start, if he comes off the bench, oh my gosh, everybody's like, 
Oh, Mateo's on. He's going to get on second and get on third. And it, it reminds me a little bit of like Ricky Henderson. I mean, Ricky could win games all by himself. I uh, drive a walk it on first, steal second, steal third. Next thing you know, a sack fly game's over. And the Orioles are going to need those kind of uh, one run wins. And I think Mateo can help lead that. I think he's an incredibly valuable piece. He's got more years under his belt right now. And I think Major League value is invaluable, to be honest with you. The adjustment that a lot of young players have to make when they come to the big leagues is, is because of the adjustment that other teams make so rapidly. The scouting, uh, the understanding of uh, if they will see a hole on a guy and they will target that and pitchers will target that. And now with analytics, everybody sees it even faster than they did, you know, 10 years ago. So, you know, the ability to make adjustments on the fly, it's hard sometimes for younger players to do that. Uh, we talked about Gunner last year, and that's exactly what was happening to him. And it took him almost two months to finally understand, you know, he's got to start getting in more attack mode and take it to them and get them on their heels. And uh, so there is that transition period. I think Mateo's been through it. And listen, we saw him for a month, a little over a month, be one of the best hitters in the American League. So he can give you those flashes if somebody goes down. Mateo gets on a hot streak. His back can play at times as well. But I think Mateo has incredible value. I'm still a little surprised that he hasn't, you know, been traded to be able to maybe land another big arm because I, I think one thing that Elias has been able to do is to have continued foresight and understand, you know, who we can get. How when trade value players are, are a little bit higher, he'll be able to move them. And I think with the stockpile of talent. You may see that start happening this year with especially players like, you know, Cedric Mullins, Anthony Santander, Hayes, and I think Mateo might be in there, Arias as well. Um, if there are opportunities, get these guys off to a good start, their trade value might get up a little bit, and you might end up seeing some midseason trades for these guys because I got to believe that there are 29 other teams that want Jorge Mateo on their roster because of how impactful he can be on both sides of the ball. So, and with you saying that, I'm with you. I think that people, the talent is not disputed. It's the consistency with the talent that he has is the, the, is the part that bothers players. And you know what, Bordy, at some point down here, I'm going to get you down here where the studio is, and I got this giant monitor that I'm still trying to figure out how to use. If we're <laughs> going to sit down here or we're going to get a video, and I want you to talk about certain things that you see. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're willing to help me with that, I'd thank you in advance. Yes, thank you. <laughs> That's what I needed, Bordy. All right, we'll let you get out of here. Um, I know it's been a long day, and you got to buckle up. You better be ready for tomorrow. I need you. You got to carry. You got to carry the show. I'm looking for a great time, a great opening day. We'll have some fun talking about it. All right, perfect. Well, hey, Bordy, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, and uh, we will we'll we'll see you tomorrow, bright and well, I guess not bright and early. I'll see you from one to three when we're live <laughs> on 105.7. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, for everyone. Me. Mike Ford, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. All right, we're getting Morty out of there. Get him some rest. He's gonna be working yeah. hard. We got we got a lot going on here. We got a lot going on here. Uh, I'm, ex I'm just so fired up right now. I'm not gonna lie. Just it's so good to be talking about Orioles baseball, knowing it's tomorrow. You know, yeah. like I feel like we've waited for so long. I mean, we've had the Corbin Burns trade, where that, gosh, that feels so feels long like ago at ago. this point, but. <laughs> We've been fighting. We've been getting through the dog days, and now it's right there. You know, I can I can taste pickles. I can taste it. <laughs> well, uh, well, well yeah. I mean, I can always taste pickles, but like I mean, the restaurant. You, yeah. Do, do you taste the pickles or do you taste the orange crushes? To each their own. We'll okay. find out tomorrow. Orange crushes with pickles in them. No, Kevin. This is why we can't. I, I shouldn't know. have him in the same frame as me. Yeah, Kevin, <laughs> it's. There's going to be some motto here with like dumb shit sponsored by Kevin. Okay. But it should. It's a good sponsorship, by the it's, way. It's, it's it, a, good, a, a lot of content comes with that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, you're a good kid, Kevin. And everyone that's joining, we appreciate you joining. A lot happening tonight. We still have way more going on here. Uh, it's the Ryan Rippin Show. Hit that like and subscribe button. While, while we're getting, actually, we have another guest that's coming in the studio that I didn't tell anybody else about here for a second. So that's fun. But also, we have someone behind the scenes right now because. He's a part of Birdland. He's driving so many positive narratives here. And while we get our guests that's coming in studio set up, I would like to then introduce you to the friend, friend of the show, friend on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Mr. Jason Benowitz. Jason, oh, how are you doing? 
How are we How's doing? it going? Man, Man I got you. You made me follow all of that. Yep. Yes, we did. But w- the reason why we wanted to have you on is because we know how much you care about this team, and also that's the new cover that everyone needs to see. That should be on a shirt. That yes, that's what we got to work on. We got to get that on a shirt. That's for yeah. sure. Well, you, you look great. How how you feeling? You got a chance to meet them. And again, big day for Birdland. But just from your perspective, mm-hmm. this is this team. This is why we love the community of Birdland. You care about this team just like so many others. Talk about your emotions on to today as we get ready for opening day. Man, um, you know, there there's a lot there. Uh it's it it's it's a little, you know, somewhat bittersweet. Um because you know it, it does come right on the heels of what happened with uh with Peter. Um so it's it's a little bittersweet there, but um that goes out the window quickly and it, it just turns to excitement because um everything we've read, everything we've seen, my three minute conversation, um again, and I'm, you said the best earlier, he just cares. Um, he really does. Um and, you know, uh, everyone in the group seems to care. Everyone just loves Baltimore as much as the people that are sitting in the stands. Um, so, yeah, there, there's a lot of emotion there, but I think the biggest one is just excitement and anticipation of what's next. Uh, and I'm sure you guys talked about that a lot, and um, we'll hear that in your interview. Yeah, for sure. There, There's a lot that happened in the interview and a lot that's happened over the last few days, but the biggest thing is, there's so many people that care about the community, so many people that love Baltimore. And despite everything that's happened in the last week, in so many different angles, right? If we're talking about passing to Peter, Peter Angelos, the, the tragedy with everything with the Francis Scott Key Bridge accident, everything. But like I was saying earlier, something that really brings the community together. And again, it's sports works in mysterious ways, right? And in this case specifically, there's so many people that love the Baltimore Orioles, Whatever's going on, there's there's a community that's built. And I think that that's something that this team can help in so many different ways, minus just the fact of going out there and winning games. Um, first thoughts, just for you, and then we'll have you on for a little bit here, get you ready. Are you going to come down and see me at Pickles tomorrow, I hope? I should, yeah. I'll see. Okay. I, we'll see what the rain. We'll see what the rain does. But you know what? Everyone's yeah. doing a rain dance. Zach's been working no, it's on anti it rain dance. Okay. Anti rain dance. Anti-rain. Why would we do a rain dance? We should. We should have asked Rick how to to fight the rain. I saw. I saw a few people saying that tomorrow would be a great time for a uh, little uh, tarp slide if uh, hmm. if it happens. So. You know, maybe you have to make that happen. Someone's got to step up. Why'd Rocco come back in the? I, I don't know who let Rocco back in, but Rocco's he also is back. muted. He does this all the time. Well, there we I, go. I was, I was typing back there. Jason, good to see you, buddy. How are you? <laughs> don't, shake your head at me. don't you dare shake your head at me. I don't know why you're coming back, but <laughs> there's a lot of love hate for those that are tuning in here. Ro- Rocco <laughs> and Jason have developed a somewhat, I, it's not a bromance, but it's kind of like a stepbrothers in a certain way. Where it's right, they really are going through that phase of the movie where they just flat out don't like each other, they want to kill each other, but there is love deep down, and maybe they're going to be best friends when it's all said and done. I I doubt it, but we'll see. Oh, that's how I that's exactly how I think about when I see Rocco, too. Oh my god, everyone I hates er- me. I, I earned a lot of points with Rocco today, by the way. He did. Kevin's so, Kevin's my yeah. only friend here, honestly. That's Brad right. absolutely yeah. hates me, he's been hating me from day one, and then everyone else. Is- like they've kind of followed suit so it's terrible day I, got, I got your back rocker short kings unite yeah short kings. Well, that, short since kings unite. kevin's the one that has your back that's all you need to know so. <laughs> yeah as long as uh kevin onomatopoeia has your back yeah exactly. i need stack has to give me another nickname i have my list going we will, we will continue to add to that hey jason since you're on here we talked a little bit about the team and what's going on but for you yep. what is something you're looking forward to with this 2024 orioles team or something that is really kind of at the forefront of your mind as the Orioles, for the first time in a little bit of time, they're saying they are no longer the hunted. Sorry, they are no longer the hunters. They are the hunted in the AL East. Yeah, well, no, it's it's exactly that. I mean, I uh, in my lifetime, there's only been that one stretch of that, that mid-2010s where, you know, even though they were really good, they still kind of felt like the underdog the whole time. Um, so really for, for my lifetime, this will be the first year 
where it, it feels like other teams are chasing the Orioles and not, not the other way around. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of the young guys. Um, you know, I, I've mentioned this in, in many different ways, but I down at spring training, all the young guys were just tearing it up. Um, so whether it be Jackson, whenever that happens, or, you know, Colton Kowser, hopefully tomorrow, if he's in the lineup. No. Um, thank you. Sorry, I, I had appreciate to do that. that. Which, by the way, tangent, um, in case no one else saw it on Twitter, we have approval from the big man himself. Yeah. So if you're we'll there tomorrow, him. moo. That's yeah. that's from the man himself. Yep. So um, people that don't that are listening to this and have no mm-hmm. idea what the hell you're talking about, <laughs> we're not just people aren't mooing just to moo. It's because of the player Colton Kowser. Kowser mm-hmm. last name last name has cow in it, hence the moo. Zach's just not going out there. Well, Zach might go out there just to moo his ass off, but that's so the context. Mooing. All right, sorry, Jason, didn't mean to cut you off. Nope, nope, you're good. Um, but no, it's just the 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 idea that the Orioles are are the big dog is new, um, at least for me anyway. I haven't experienced it, and I'm sure um, there's a lot of people in Birdland or people who be in the seats this year who feel the same way. So just to experience that and full ballpark, national TV, um, all the things that come with being good is just it's 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 the next chapter, if you will. No doubt about it. Rock, what you got for us? Jason, when I think we first started following each other, I really, honestly, I'm going to say some kind things about you, and then I'm going to follow it up with some not so kind. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. But your, <laughs> <laughs> your like feed was so even keel. You, you never got too high. You never got too low as a fan. You were always kind of the voice of reason within this fan base a lot of times. But when things weren't necessarily going the way this fan base might have hoped, you're always like, listen, trust in our guys that we have, Hyde, Elias, the players we have right now. How are you able to just carry, I guess, that mentality as a fan? Because it is it is really tough on fans sometimes. It's easy to get frustrated, easy to get pissed off. But then there are times where it's like, okay, you know, the wait was worth it. Kind of like this with the new ownership group and the next chapter that you talked about as well. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I think that's the first nice thing you've ever said to me. Um, so appreciate that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think a lot of it is, it has a lot to do with the way I live my life, honestly, as that's going to sound cliche, but, um, you know, whether you have a good day or a bad day and me and me and Ryan have talked about this before, um, whether you have a good day or a bad day or, or someone's trying to get under your skin or your, your, your friends are lifting you up, you're having the best day of your life. It's it, in the end, it, it all just it's going to even out. And I think with the Orioles, you know, I've I've sat through games where there were six thousand people in the stands and they lost 19 to three. Um, and it's really those days where I was like, OK, someday this is going to be worth it. And I think really it's the hope. Right. It's if, as a sports fan of any team, you you're there because you love your team and you have hope that they're going to do something special and incredible. Um, and for the Orioles, it, it's taken a lot longer than I think anyone's wanted it to, but we're, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I've, I've said before, I said this, uh, yesterday, or I think two days ago on Twitter, I've always likened it to the shaking of a soda bottle where the longer you shake it, the bigger the explosion is. And I think yeah. that's, we're about to experience that this year in Birdland. That's the perfect analogy, actually. Just, it felt like for so long you were just waiting and now finally like Mm -hmm. you're holding like you said you're holding the soda bottle and you're like this is we're we're, it's ready like it's time for us to go chase that world series to go after and that's what the fun part about this season is and you know like you you've talked about there's going to be bad days there's going to be great days the orioles will not go 162 and 0 what be really awkward if that happened now i mean that'd be cool Mm -hmm. but this would get played a lot uh it is. There are going to be losses. There are going to be bad days for players, and it's all about just understanding that there's an end goal. It's the long game, and you can't get too high or too low. You just have to kind of enjoy the moment as it comes. Yeah. No, that, that's the way I've always been with it. It's not it, – because also, I, I I mean, hopefully it comes across when people follow me or read my stuff. I'm just – I'm a baseball fan. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, 
of course I want the Orioles to do good, but I'm if it's baseball season, I'm I'm the happiest person on planet mm-hmm. Earth. I just am. So it doesn't I like the years where you didn't have the expectations, just go enjoy a baseball game and a twenty dollar hot dog, you know. But now now that the expectations are there, it is it, it feels a little different, but now it just makes the enjoyment that much easier and you don't have to find it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I mean that and like you said, that's what it's all about. Even in the times where the Orioles, it wasn't really expected that they win 60 games. I mean, they were trying not to lose a hundred games again. And right. even you have to find the good in those, you know, the number of times that, you know, a different player would capture the hearts of Birdland and you just you rooted for all these different guys and you knew eventually they probably weren't a part of the big plan. They weren't going to be here when we're hopefully winning World Series, but you appreciated what they did and, you know, being a part of the tougher years for the Orioles. Right. And there, I mean, there's, there's plenty of those stories. I could, I could, you know, rattle them off one by one, but uh, if you've been in it for the long haul, I'm, which I'm sure a lot of people on here have you, uh, you know, who those players are and uh, you've probably felt the same way. Guilt, guilty. And you want to, if you want some rip mm-hmm. after dark stories, when the 2021 tides team was not doing so well oh, and those years of the rebuild also on the upbringing, but on a, on a, on other notes, like I can tell you stories before that when Cedric Mullins wasn't the Cedric Mullins in the big leagues mm-hmm. where he was trying to get the confidence back. And that's why I love this team personally too, Jason. It's when you get older, you understand it's a business and people, when you're not in the business of baseball, you might never see that side of it you might understand it but you might not ever see it but the reason why i care so much even more about this specific team is because of the personal connection i have with those guys and understanding it is just a game but also what makes it even more special right now is that all those struggles that they had for these years this rebuild was tough but you know what and this might sound poetic but it was a beautiful moment for a lot of these guys because they found out who they are they persevered and now they are getting to reap the benefits of what just happened and what's happening right now is the Orioles are one of the best teams in baseball. They have the number one farm t- system in baseball, and this team is ready to lift off yet again. I know people got pissed off with the word lift off a couple of years. The boys are ready to rock, okay? And, Jason, yep. we're going to be, whether you like it or not here, let you get out of here and we can keep moving. But you are, whether you like it or not, we're just going to throw you back in here. We'll kick Rocco out when we have to. Don't worry. Oh, he's Perfect. back. Just kidding. We'll you see, see this is what he does. He just yeah. hangs around. He does. He just can't get rid of him. Can't escape him. Can't escape yeah. him, just like Cedric Mullins. But, Jason, two thoughts here. One, who's your – who – prediction for the season? Let's do that. World Series winner for the season, matchup. Mm-hmm. And then, two, who wins the first hot dog race of the season? Oh. Relish, mustard, or ketchup? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll start with with the second one because um, it ketchup should clean sweep. There's no other condiment. I mean, oh, I, no. I don't know what we're doing here. So, uh, okay, you know what? No. Why you, you know what we're done with that? Yeah, yeah. No, completely disagree. Yep. Uh, yes. Give me mustard, relish. Okay, never mind. No, 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 Kevin, get this Kevin wait, do, do me and Rocco agree on something? Yeah. We just- do we just oh, this, best this friends? The first step. This is the first step. Do we, do we this just is how they make the bunk beds. Growth. Yeah. We'll Dude, have so much room for activity. The, the reason Relish is going to win is because I'm running as Relish in the hot dog race. <laughs> that would not, be so funny. <laughs> well, not on day one. I should have asked Mika Rubenstein if you needed a, a in-person Relish. Don't worry. That's you the could. next question. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Kevin's running as an in-person relish while the uh, virtual other two hot dogs are running <laughs> on the thing and he has to beat them around. Uh, I could do it. I could that would be beat, electric. Beat, yeah, yeah. What the Braves did, Zach. Beat the freeze. Remember that? I don't know. Right. Kevin. Oh, yeah. It's beat, beat the, the Kevin. freeze, but just Kevin. I got, I got some speed. Also, I can I can run as almost as fast backwards as I can forwards. Okay, Dion. You know, that kind of makes sense in some weird mm-hmm. way. That kind of makes, that sense makes so you. much sense. I could so see All that. right, your quick World yeah. Series prediction here, Jason. We'll get you out of here. Yeah. No, um, I'm I'm going I'm going to O's Dodgers. Um, I'm I'm going, I know it's cookie cutter, but um and my reason is a little selfish too. Give me mm-hmm. Shohei Otani at Camden Yards in the fall. I, I want it. So I want Corbin Burns, Shohei Otani, bottom of the first I mean, top of the first, just Electric factory. Chills. Me. So. Chills. And then the Orioles won the World Series? Yeah. Hopefully. Yes. 
<laughs> okay, sure. good. I hope so. We're, no, we're yeah, I'm, no, I'm I, this, and I will say this too. This is this is the first year I'm actually picking the Orioles to win the. I have wow. I've, again trying to say level headed. I have not picked the Orioles in a long time. So, but this is the year I'm I'm picking them. Love Boom, it. baby. I love it. And Jason, we love you. Birdland loves you. You do so much. The giveaway for opening day, which you raffled off to get people the opportunity to go to the game. You, we're going to have so much more collaborations for the season, but I'm so glad. And like I said, whether you like it or not, I'm going to force you to come back on here and do something on a routine basis. Is that okay with you? Let's do it. You I, uh, and I, I do. I do have to do. I have to explain one more thing. Okay. Because I, Brad's not showing his face. Well, <laughs> well, he actually he actually had to step out, but call him out here. So call him out. Call yeah, him out. He didn't want the I smoke. Am. That's why Brad left. He didn't want the smoke. Right, because he's not here. That's yeah. I I don't. Rocco showed up I'll, again. This is growth. We're we're growing here. But <laughs> baby, baby Brad's steps. Right. Now. Brad's nowhere to be found. So yeah. well, I, I got gonna, nothing. We're gonna continue to bring. I, we're going to bring this unit together here as friends, all right? You know what? You've seen Semi Pro. I have a ring that says love. We're going to bring love back to the show. Probably not, but it's a good try. Jason Benowitz, everybody, we appreciate you, Jason. Good I'll Jason. see you tomorrow. You rock, Jason. Jason, everybody. Give him a round of applause, Kevin. All right. Kevin, Kevin you know, keep clapping. Keep clapping, clapping, Kevin. Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. And everyone, everybody love everybody that's in this chat. It's on this stream. We appreciate you tuning in for an Orioles opening day special Wednesday night. We've had so many great guests so far. And we're not done yet, by the way. We have another guest in studio right now. Uh, but we appreciate you guys. If you're new to this channel, hit that like and subscribe. And if you're on X, might as well hit that follow button. And, and, and just so you don't miss any of the notifications, we have so much more going on. Specifically, we have a lot more coming for you guys later on this or tonight. Uh, an exclusive sit down with Mr. David Rubenstein and Cal Ripken Jr. talking about the new news, which is the Orioles are now officially in. Well, sorry, let me. I did the same thing when I was doing with Brad earlier. The ownership, I don't know, it, u- unique New York. Let's do it this way. Owners approve. That's it. Owners hey, approve. There we go. The deal. Rocco, stop shaking your head. Be supportive. Yeah. So, I'm sorry about that, Rip. It's okay. Good kids all around. Good kids all around. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Unique New York. And Adam, appreciate you. Thank you. I know we got, there's a lot of people. This is why we got a lot of people that care about Birdland. Adam's one of them. I know he's excited for this season, just like so many other people. And you know what? Our next guest, he's really excited because he's actually got to go back to work to do it <laughs> for the team, literally. Not kidding about this. And it's not, it's not Rocco. But we love Rocco. But you know who we love? It's this next guy who actually, which is even cooler for me, is one of the broadcasters for the Baltimore Orioles. But our connection starts in 2019 for the Frederick Keys. And after that season, he had a chance to now live out and be in the big leagues. He left us. He left the minors to be in the big leagues. And that is our friend of the show and of mine, Mr. Jeff Arnold. Jeff. All right. What's up, yeah. fellas? How are we doing? How's it going? Yeah, by the, the, by the way, Ryan, you took me back to like, college acting class when we would do unique new york to yes. like these yeah. warm-up exercises another one we would do is whether the weather be fair or whether the weather be not we'll be together whatever the weather whether we like it or not so i guess oh, that means wow. i haven't had too many beers tonight yet oh. <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know if i could yeah, do that no yes. yeah, yes. what the hell did you just say that was the weather the weather, whether the weather be fair or whether the weather be not we'll be together whatever the weather whether we like it or not Wow. So if you want to like get yourself tongue tied and you want to, you know, it's a yeah. good way to check yourself after a Ravens game on a Sunday or after a oh, big man. Orioles game. If you can say it, it means you're okay. If you can't, well, maybe it means you had a little bit too much. I'll be yeah. honest. I think I'd get do, the, I think I'd do better. Get the, exactly. Get the, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> We're going to have people standing there going, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, that's like trying to say the ABCs backwards for like a sobriety test. That's, that's like one of the, I like, think I could not, physically do that if i'm sober so i i wouldn't be able to do that if i was uh-huh. under the influence <laughs> yeah a verbal sobriety test right but you there. know what I, i'm a guy by the way that uh might think that if i have some tequila with me i might actually say that better that's just me because i thought tequila brought in confidence and jeff got to see that on a first hand of of how to get through some slumps in 19 with the frederick piece the frederick yeah. freds because we had a little rough spot to say the least we had some great vibes great guys not necessarily awesome the best, guys. not necessarily the best record. 
No, and you know what? I think in my time in Frederick, Ryan, you weren't there the year, I think, before no. when they made the playoffs. Right. But I think there was only one winning half of Frederick Keys baseball in my time there. I had I, I made the playoffs. Well, I didn't make the playoffs. The team made the playoffs. My first year doing minor league baseball when I was in Frisco, Texas, doing the Rough Riders. Jerkson Profar was actually the star of that team. And, you know, he's gone on to a really nice major league career. But I was like, man, this is really cool. I wonder when the next time this is going to happen. And it turns out the next time that this happened was last year when the Orioles got to the playoffs because yeah. I had not, <laughs> I had never really experienced that so much before. And as we come into this year, so many expectations, 101 wins last year, and you come into this season, you're just like, man, this is a different feeling up here. It's a, yeah. it's a really a different feeling. You don't, you don't think about it too much though. There's not a whole mm. lot of teams that can say, we're going into the next season coming off 101 wins. So how are you supposed to feel? Like, what's yeah. it about? It's, it's pretty special. It's pretty awesome when you think about it. Yeah, it's really awesome. I mean, just the, like you said, the excitement, it's a different feeling and a feeling that around here, people haven't had in a little bit. I think, you know, obviously probably the closest things are the past two years because there was excitement of what young guys are coming up. But now it's a different excitement of, okay, we have these young guys obviously still coming up, the Cowsers, eventually Jackson Holiday, but there are stars here. You know, Gunnar Henderson is a star. Adley Rutschman is a star. Corbin Burns is a star. And that's something that in Baltimore the past few years, it hasn't felt that way going into opening day. And now there's something to be excited about. Like you said, coming off a 101 win season, that's not something I'm, I've am used to at all. In my, and that's incredible going into this year. You're like, this is really something to be excited about. We can go compete for a World Series. And you know what I would offer this too? Stars here mm -hmm. and stars below. Like guys yeah. that are on their way up with mm -hmm. Jackson Holiday. I was so impressed by how he played, by the way, in spring training. Yeah. Um, I, I got a chance to talk to him, I think, the second time that I was there. We did a couple of trips in and out this year. And his maturity, his confidence, the feeling like that he belongs, mm -hmm. that he is supposed to be there. I couldn't, I can't imagine having that kind of poise at 20 years old. I just can't. I mean, it, it's it's crazy to me that somebody can be that confident. I know he spent a lot of time in big league clubhouses growing up with his dad, and but I'm just like, man, he's got a certain level of swagger about him that you mm -hmm. just don't see out of almost any 20 year old ever. And then Kobe Mayo, I think he has a ton of talent. I was impressed by his defense and how he played. And then I remember the home run that he hit against the Braves where the first thing is it left the bat was somebody's windshield is in some real trouble yeah. right now. <laughs> and he's got he's got big-time power. And I, I was really impressed with Kobe. You know, last year I thought it was Kasten Kerstad that kind of stood out to me. I think Kobe was kind of the guy for mm -hmm. me this year that I was paying attention to a lot because I had seen Colton Kowser and what he could do. But there's so much talent up here. There's so much talent below and as James McCann, he's, he said it this year. He said it last year, too. It's just not usual where you come off the group that's going to be in the big leagues, and then they're like, okay, we got a couple of guys here. we got a couple of guys there. It's literally just a yeah. long, long list of other people who are ready to help you out. Yeah, and I think people kind of take that for granted with how just how special it is because, you know, it is one of those things where we've talked about with a few guys already tonight. Jackson Holiday would probably start at shortstop for a lot of other teams, but it's a luxury because the Orioles are like, listen, we have a potential MVP candidate in Gunnar Henderson that can play short right now and give Jackson that time to develop. And it is special to have a group of stars in the majors. And then you, you can look down pretty much the next five prospects and you're like, he can be a star. He can be a star. He can be a star. And, uh, man, would a lot of fan bases love to be in this position? Well, I think that's what people forget about. Is yeah. that the fact of just how yeah. deep it is? And also, don't sleep on another guy. A reason why they're not rushing Jackson Holiday too. And again, every team has their reasons. You can say service manipulation, whatever you want to say. It's your opinions, but also do not sleep on Jordan Westbrook. Do yeah. not sleep on no. Westy. He is so talented. He is one of those guys that's not going to be up there of them going, oh, Gunn or Adley superstars. I'll tell you what, Jordan Westbrook is a damn good player that has star potential, but he's not going to get the recognition because of the other guys, the other prospects. But there's a reason why when they made the trade, and Joey Ortiz and D.L. Hall, that it wasn't Jordan Westbrook. They love him. And, and Joey and D.L. are great players, by the way, too. But they have an investment in this guy. And I believe that we're going to see a really, really good Jordan Westbrook here upcoming. And this one comment I wanted to, to say – uh, was about with Heston Kerstad. Heston seems like he still needs some seasoning. I'll tell you what, last year I thought he was the best pure left-handed hitter mm -hmm. ready to help the team. 
at at the at that juncture, just because what happened with Kowser and Stowers, confidence wise, that looked like they took a hit when they came up and not playing consistently. Heston, when he came up, he looked ready and and he looked like he was in a better place mentally. But Kowser had the better spring. I really thought if Heston had just as good of a spring training as Kowser, Heston might be the one on the team. So just all these guys, they're right there. They're on the the cusp there. So it should be very interesting to see. Not going to bring. We're going to bring back our friend of the show as well, Rocco DeSangro. Rocco, are you still with us? You want to unmute yourself, Rocco? First of all, I'm not a friend of the show. I'm on <laughs> this show every single episode. He's a part of the team. He's what? a part what? of the team. Friend of the show. You know what? Oh, we welcome back Rocco. Let's bring back Rocco. Oh, I'll see you next time, buddy. We'll bring you to one. Fear, fears of being designated for assignment the, yeah, day start, the start of the regular he's, season. He's, he's been fired a couple times from this show already. So. Rocco, we think you actually have a lot of potential. We just need more seasoning down in the minors. Yeah. You know what? It's I miss not Rick service Dempsey. time manipulation, I, I, I promise. I miss Rick Dempsey being on here because he told you that you couldn't read and it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I don't think he meant like he, he meant like I couldn't read a shirt. but Yeah, he definitely he said he couldn't read the thing. shirt. No, but he's, no. he said you couldn't read. Anyway. The, the clip yeah. will speak all. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, hey, 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 Rock, you know what they say in uh, in Pirates of the Caribbean? Everyone knows, you know, part of the ship, part of the crew. So Thanks. I guess you are still part of the ship. Or also, uh, maybe you just have to send, spend an eternity on Davy Jones' ship or in Davy Jones' locker, whatever the hell thing is. But I guess you're stuck with us. Rock, uh, Joe obviously thinks very highly of you. Before you... Go ahead. Yeah. You're yeah, going to go put ahead. Joe in timeout. Well, while you put Joe in timeout here for a second, hit that like and subscribe button. We have Jeff Arnold here, Orioles broadcaster, friend of the show, friend of mine personally, and now he's becoming friends of all of you because I think what I, and this is why I'm so happy you're here, Jeff, because you have such great knowledge. You're a great dude. You're a good kid. That's what I like to tell people. And, and honestly, and honestly, I'm glad you said that because you're a great dude too. You guys are all great dudes. Oh. And you know what? And you know what? That's the most important thing. Like yeah. when, mm -hmm. when, when we all die, it's not going to say one X number of awards, did this, whatever. It's going to say, were you a good dude or not? Yeah. Like what kind of dad were you? What kind of son were you? What kind of brother were you? Like what kind of human being were you? That's so like if it, so I, when you say great dude, I really appreciate you saying, that. of course. And you know what? I appreciate you. You know what? We're going to put guy. on the, well, this is getting a little bit morbid here, but on the tombstone here, like good guy, thumbs up. Great guy, maybe, but Rocco, we love you. You're with us with everybody. I don't know why I just throw I didn't, you. By the way, I didn't mean I didn't mean for this to take like a morbid and terrible turn. I'm just saying I really appreciate when somebody says you're a great dude or a I'll good be, dude. I'll be honest. Yes. I like to make it yeah. awkward. That's, yeah, that, that's, just a, that's a hand up on you. That's a hand up. <laughs> give a no, shit? No. Honestly, rip after dark. You might you might have a different opinion of me. All right, Rocco, go ahead. Nobody on this show is allowed to speak at my funeral when it does happen. I'm just saying that. I'm what have I done to you? What yeah, I thought it happened was one. Jeff, okay. thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. Great yeah, guy. Yeah, no. A no, lot, I, a lot of <laughs> God, sorry. No, 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 it's, no. I'm no you, it's it's you, man. <laughs> a lot of people in the chats, I from since this show, this stream kind of began, they've been asking about the warehouse and who's gonna hit it mm -hmm. first. So you see these guys take BP, you're around these guys all the time. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Which Oriole is going to be the first one to hit the warehouse in the air? Does it happen this season? And if it does happen this season, who's going to be the guy to get it done? It's not an easy question to answer because there are quite Sorry. a few people that I could see doing it. Um, my guess, honestly, and I might regret it because there's another, there's two people that I'm thinking mm -hmm. of right out of the gate. I'm going to say Heston Kirsten is going to be the guy that does it. That is... The, the raw power that he has, and, and I still go back to spring training last year. Orioles were playing the Pirates. I think it was one of the first games that me and Brett were doing last year. And he hit one right around the batter's eye, right center field. And I'm just like, oh, 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 wow. That went a long ways. He was the one that like just struck me as somebody that could hit the warehouse. But then again, I think, I think Gunner could do it. I think Adley could do it. There's just so much natural talent and power. But if I had to take a guess out of one person, Heston Kirst as the person I'm going with. Dude's got stupid pop, stupid juice. It so, uh, it's honestly some of the best natural power that I've probably ever seen. You're going to make our uh, recurring guest, Joe, very happy, even though he's in timeout right now for comments <laughs> he said about me all night long. So when he does come back and hear that, he'll be very happy. Man. I appreciate it. He will. He'll, go, he'll have to go back and watch this show. And if you're new to the show, hit that like and subscribe button. This has been a really fun night so far. Mm -hmm. Jeff, I'm so glad. 
because I'm going to come bother you. I'm going to make you come make you come in here and join us more often. I'll take you to dinner too. We actually it's great. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, you, you can you can take me to La Scala, where actually just was a little while ago. Uh, highly recommend the Bronzino. Have you? Have you? Oh, if, 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 okay, if you? If you? Yeah, if you? Yeah. If you're going to go in there, I recommend the Bronzino. And then I'm a big Tagliata person too. So, yeah. um, right. two of the best Italian places ever. They're just so good. So, I, I, so maybe Tagliata, hundred percent Tagliata. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll I know. Get, get we'll get the band together and we'll do it. I'm in. Don't mm-hmm. don't tempt me with a good time. Um, we wanted to touch people in earlier, Jeff, on kind of it's been a wild night. I've been texting you about it. Uh, Brad mm-hmm. and I were scrambling over at the warehouse. Uh, trying to get some some very interesting perspectives, specifically from new mm-hmm. ownership. And so we had that, and actually we have the teaser right here. So those that haven't seen it, just a small clip, we are releasing the interview tonight. Bray's David next Rubenstein. chapter. Oh, gosh. All right. There you Mom, go. Hand up, hand up. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, Kevin, you, you, you know, you just... <laughs> I was too excited. I was too excited about it. Well, yeah, you got, you got a little too horny there. And it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. You're Thank a good you kid. It happens to the best of us. But what I was saying is this is going to be out there. We're going to release it tonight. The press conference is tomorrow, but it's the first time that David Rubenstein and my father have spoken publicly. And for me, it's a really cool moment because I know how much it means to my father personally. And also, you're going to hear how much David Rubenstein cares about this community and the Baltimore Orioles. But let's just play the quick teaser here. It's only about 10 seconds, so you guys can listen. Oh, wait. Okay. It went away. (laughs) I will say us uh here it is. Us, us, yeah, right. good, no, no, here it is, here it is, here it is. Is next chapter the most, Mr. Rubenstein? What to you is the next chapter for the Orioles and for the city of Baltimore? And then there's the cliffhanger. Yeah. And that's I, it. That's all you get, everyone. Me and uh <laughs> me, me and Kevin sitting down editing that should not have been as intense oh, as it was. Me and Kevin were like shave off another tenth of a second no that's it, what it is still like i'm still thinking about the tenth of a second that i kept right on and it's like you know no one else notices that type of stuff but it's like when you're sitting there doing the work and you know you're putting oh, this oh, in. I've, oh i believe me i've oh, been there I've yeah done, i've done it it's, you, it's yeah. like i've had to teach myself that like look no one cares about this but me like it's the only person because <laughs> right. it's such a small mm-hmm. small detail but i'm a perfectionist personally so mm-hmm. i'm just like i need this to be where i do it with my own show yeah. i do it with this so, yes, there's like a tenth of a second. I was trying to see, should I keep it on? Should I take it off? But I think overall people understood the message with this. It, it was, was like exciting. literally like 20 minutes after we put the video out and like we were walking to our cars and Kevin goes, I did, uh, <laughs> I did, uh, <laughs> do you think people, it's too, uh, it's, we should have shaved that off. And I was like, it's <laughs> like, it's okay. People <laughs> love the video. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, and Jeff, I couldn't even, I didn't even know what was going on. Like they were already on top mm-hmm. and this is why we got a great team and everybody, this is like we've talked about too people you work with, the production with the Orioles. There's so many great people that don't always get the recognition. These guys, even though you're seeing their face right here, they were sweating their ass <laughs> off trying to make it all happen. I didn't know what was happening once it was, you know, hey, we got it ready. What do you have? Ready? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did. Right. I got on the phone with Ruben. I was like, we have the teaser ready. He's like, what did you edit? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Like, that's why we do this. Yeah. That's, that's the reason why we're into this. Like, I remember when I was calling the John Means no hitter a couple of years ago and we were in, we were in studio that was in Seattle mm-hmm. is what COVID was going on. And it was like the seventh inning and Brett's doing the seventh. And I come back from the men's room and I'm just like, this guy is going to throw a no hitter. Like, I think I knew mm-hmm. about like the second inning. He was going to yeah. throw a no hitter. And so I'm just like, well, here we go. Yeah. It's like, this is like huge moment, huge moment in your life, huge moment in your career. What is this going to be like? And I and it's like the same kind of thing. You're just like you're you're locked in every second of it because you right. want it to be exactly right. And yeah. I and I know ex, I know exactly what it was like. I probably would wish I would have felt that way during the Adam Frazier double. But as I said on the mm-hmm. on the video where I turned beat red and still maybe I'm not quite sure how I didn't pass out. Um, I wasn't quite sure like what I said when I actually yeah. was calling the thing. It was like an out of body experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't there for the Delman Young, yeah, Delman yeah. Young game, yeah. But it did kind of feel like that was like my dumb and young game because you know, yeah. just just doing it because you just you don't have moments like that too often no. in your career. I mean, maybe you get one, mm-hmm. maybe you get two, maybe it's what like calling a World Series is going to feel yeah. like. I can only imagine. But yeah, I mean, when you have moments like that, and for you guys, and for for you all, when you're you're doing an interview like that, which is such a big thing for the fan base and for the show and for everything. Yeah just the level that it takes on and the, how special it is. 
that's just that's the stuff you remember that's why we do this yeah, yeah i mean like you said it, it is the some of the best moments are the times where you look back and you're like i don't even know what i said like you just you get so oh, yeah. lost in the moment and you just those are the where the best calls come from it's when you genuinely you can tell that the commentator is in the moment and understands mm -hmm. that yeah. And you know what? That Frazier double down the line was electric. Hey, you did you did great, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Fantastic you. Call. Thank, you. Thank, you. It was good. Thank you. Actually, I heard the call back in its entirety. I didn't hear back for like three or four months later, actually, because mm -hmm. I heard like part of it, but I didn't hear all of it until I actually saw 101 and Nicole sent me, the, Nicole Ryder from Orioles Digital does a tremendous job. She sent me the video of it. I'm like, man forgot that camera was there <laughs> i forgot that i forgot that camera was there but no it's a it's a thrill i mean I, it's just this is just something so special in your life that you that i'm so lucky i'm a part of that we're all so lucky we're a part of that we're, we're watching this team every day and it just there's not a whole lot of people that can say that you've got something like this in your life and it's just it's really really cool it's been amazing it's been amazing the the sense of of how everything has come together and before i ask you the next question if you do the ryan ripman show hit that like and subscribe button we would appreciate that if you're on x hit that follow button and for if you don't know who we have on here we have jeff arnold orioles broadcaster you can follow him on x as well as as well as zach bollinger 18 at chaos striker 34 and behind the scenes we got rocco de sangro if we let him pop back in there he is he's at rocco de sangro and guys Don is coming through again. Don, oh, we yeah. appreciate I love you. this Thank comment. You, Don. So, Don, Don, we get these. Uh, Jeff, we have people that are, are big supporters of the show. Don has been our regular for Love us, it. Right? So, Don says, Ryan, great show, Brad. Great haircut. Awesome guests. Tim, Rick, Mike, Jason, Jeff, and Rocco to sing. <laughs> 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 I saw that pop up and... Uh... I guess I Rocco, up Rocco up. just so you know, I do believe in you. I, yeah. I, 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 I believe in you. <laughs> See, I, I think I've taken some of the redhead stepchild away from Rocco since I've joined, but I, I can't take away all of it. No, I think he's always going to be the one. It's not my parents don't even believe in me, so thank you. I really. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what? This has become like a, a a brotherhood here. We we can rip on you, but you know what? No one else can rip on you except Joe and the rest of our community. But <laughs> anyone outside of that. They can't yeah. rip on yeah. you because you, you're our guy that we can rip on. Um, but it's been fun. Hey, I think you have another question for Jeff here, Rock, about on kind of kind of going in line with what Jeff does. Yeah, Jeff, it's uh, I'm so interested in the way you know play by play and color guys are able to just coexist in the booth, and it's like the I don't know, like you know what that person's doing, that person knows what you're doing mm -hmm. at all times. But for for a play-by-play -play person when you're calling games you know i know you didn't call the delman young double but i'm sure mm -hmm. you've watched it time and time and time again. oh yeah my but and my and my but my buddy brian anderson uh, well like my mentor like the guy that that i spend a lot of time talking to if i have a broadcasting question it's brian anderson he was the one actually that called it for for turner it was an awesome call yeah that, and like, then of it, course and then and then of course joe was just you know joe angel did an amazing job mm -hmm. too it's, it was fantastic but how much of a call if like is letting it breathe and letting that crowd, the emotion, everything about it kind of sink in and, and how much of it is, is talking over that sometimes, because I don't think people realize like people at home, they do appreciate when someone that's calling a game does let it breathe in moments like that, because it is nice to hear the roar of the crowd at Camden yards. It is nice to hear the crack of the bat. Sometimes um, someone catching a ball, it's that natural sound that people live for as baseball fans. So when you go into a game, when you, when you're calling something kind of take me through that mindset of a call like that. Rocker, you're letting me be a broadcast dork here and it's actually pretty <laughs> cool. So, so to take you like, I guess this is like inside the actor's studio, so to speak, when you have a call like that. Like I'd say number one, like people wonder how much of what I do is scripted. How much are do I have written down? I don't write anything down. The only thing I have written down is my scorecard, my notes. Like we get game notes from the team, we get game notes from Major League Baseball, we get all kinds of different information. And then I have my stuff that I put together. I do my stuff, Brett does his stuff, Mel does her stuff we all have our own notes and preparation methods and, and the way that we do it. But when it comes to like calling an actual moment, it really comes down to, I think number one, realizing that sometimes I think it's, it's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like, like 
if your reactions are pure, you're just getting kind of lost in it while it's going on. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. I'm just watching it and just reacting to it in real time. And, and I would say that it's a lot of it is just reacting in the moment. And then when it comes to the crowd, like you were talking about, like, imagine like they're, they're really, there are three voices that you hear in a game. There's my voice, there's whoever I'm working with, and then there's the crowd. Mm -hmm. And in the moment like that, where just everyone got so loud and you could hear that energy, like you need people to hear that. That's yeah. like, that's just such, that's part of the atmosphere. It's like, if you're not there, like hear the energy, hear the juice, like hear, hear like a big moment because the crowd is part of that moment. So you got to make sure that they're included. So thankfully when I went back and, and, and listened to it again, because like I said, I didn't remember what I said. Like I, I blacked out. Like and I was dead serious when I said there have been two months where I blacked out last year. One of when was when I got engaged, and the other one was <laughs> when yeah. I called that when I called that play. And and so I'm just thankful that I had a beat where I'm just like because the crowd's going insane. Yeah, the crowd's yeah. going wild. And and I wasn't there for the Delmi Youngie, but I did hear people say that it's probably one of the loudest moments mm -hmm. that Camden Yards has ever had. Yeah. And I and I certainly was like, it, it just felt like the earth was moving a little bit as I'm making that call. And I'm like, people have got to at least hear this crowd and how excited they are. Like you literally just got this huge hit against this guy who is like Fairbanks is unstoppable. Yeah. Like he's so tough. Like I thought last year he was as tough as he ever was. Mm -hmm. Like I just was watching some stuff. Like, man, this guy was good before, but like, this is a whole nother level yeah. of good. And so when this ended up going down, I was just happy that like, there was some moment where you could hear the crowd. And then I think I said, a tale with the wand of a magician. Adam Frazier, <laughs> Adam Frazier doubles him. I can't remember what I said, but but it was just really cool. And I think in just big moments, you got to just kind of, you have to be willing to leave your body and you have to be willing to just feel the excitement of it. And just, you know, in a way, like you're a broadcaster, but you're kind of like, you got the feeling of a fan. Because like a moment like that just doesn't come along too often. And yeah, it's just... I go back and look at it. And I'm like, man, I didn't know what I said, but when I heard, I'm like, thank God it was English. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you're working awesome. with the crowd in those moments. Oh yeah, like definitely. you said, it's you who you're 100%. working with in the crowd. And I mean, it must be crazy to kind of feed off of that energy whenever a moment happens because you said reacting in real time. I mean, I mm -hmm. essentially feel like you know, with you and in broadcasting, mm -hmm. it's you know, you're essentially speaking not for the crowd but with the crowd. Oh, you are. And that was actually one of the pieces of advice I got from we went to Cleveland at the very end of the year. I was talking to Tom Hamilton, my, my buddy, who I think one of these days will be in the Hall of Fame. Um, he's he's one of the best. And and I said before I left, I was like, Tom, do you got do you have anything for me? Because, you know, remember, he's called World Series. He's called a lot of big moments, a lot of big games. And he said, you know, there's one thing I could give you. And he wasn't the only one that told me this, but I was the one that I, I asked Tom. And he said, just realize that the crowd's going to do a lot so you can do a little less. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really tried to do. Mm -hmm. And I, and I go back and I listen to some of the game from, I think, that first game of the division series against the Rangers. And the crowd, like, it's early on in the game. I think it's the first inning, and Kyle Bradish is out there. And, yeah. you know, he's, like, ahead one and two or something. And I just, like, really pause for a while, let, like, let people feel it because the energy was yeah. so high. And, and you just you let the crowd, like yeah. you said, play in those moments. And then you do a little bit less, and you let the crowd do a little bit more. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of, you know, what separates the good and great play by play guys is knowing when not to talk. Knowing and that takes time. Yeah. That yeah. really takes time. And sometimes it's trial and error. Mm -hmm. It's like figuring it out as you go. One of the hardest things that I think I ever had to do was to figure out how do you use your energy the right way when, when there is nobody there. It, it, like yeah. they can put that stuff on the background in 2020, but it's it's just like some you're disconnected in a way. You're like okay, well, I'm supposed to do this. I can react to this because the crowd also can kind of tell you how to react. Yeah. yeah. And if it's big, if it's bigger, if it's biggest, like there's like broadcasting is like kind of driving a, driving a car with a bunch of different gears to it. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just like saying, all right, go fast versus go slow. It is a little more here, a little more here, a little more here. Like that's why somebody like, like Chris Berman is great for one reason, but Dan Patrick's great for another reason. Dan yeah. Patrick may not have that kind of voice, but Dan Patrick has every gear in the book. It's like mm -hmm. Brian Anderson. He has every single gear to go to where it's like, I can go here or I can go here or I can go here. And yeah, it, it takes some time to figure out just how they all work. Yeah.
you brought up right there just saying when when you have to bring your energy up mm -hmm. and honestly i think that's the beauty of it in the minor leagues the best example all these towns you go to it's mm -hmm. not all you're going to boston new york and these fan bases where you can really feel it well we're, we're trying to think we're, we're going to, we're going to lynchburg virginia baby on it i mean how many how many games did we play in lynchburg virginia on a monday or tuesday night where we were down there and you're counting the number of people do you remember the one time we went to Bowie's creek North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We're playing Campbell University. I don't even know how many people <laughs> live in Bowie's Creek. I mean, no offense to, to to Cedric Mullins or anything like that. Drew French was actually, I think, the pitching coach on that team that year. And you're just like, man, there is nobody here. And and how do you like you? How do you elevate and use the energy? And then when you come into the major leagues, it's like, okay, like you're gonna have thirty thousand people there, and you're gonna go here. It's like it's learning how to use it and it does take time to figure out because that's a big part of the broadcast yeah I'm, i remember in lynchburg you brought that up by the way lynchburg they saved my career by the way in 19. <laughs> your boy, your boy, I, start, I started off uh the season in 19 i was hitting 333 in the first like couple weeks and yeah humble brag and then i had more extra base hits than i had singles and then i just absolutely just popped my oblique in Myrtle Beach on a check swing, still hit the ball 103 miles an hour for an RBI. By the way, you had the you had the. I think he had. Just so you guys can, oh yeah, can, pump, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to brag, I'm going to do this once. So this is this is, yes. this is <laughs> all right. Get the clip. Yes. Ready. Get the, <laughs> clip it. I think in 19, if I remember correctly, of the three hardest hit balls on the year, because we had we had our, our one of our video guys sat next to me in the broadcast booth. They're like, can you know? Can you? Say? I was like, yeah. And so they'd tell me what the exit velo was, and you had the two highest ones. I think wow. your hardest one was like in Carolina. It was like 112 off the bat. I was like, wow. Pretty yeah. darn good. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Humble brag. I hit one like 114 off of uh, <laughs> Greg Holland in the double-A playoffs mm -hmm. that year. But, you know, who remembers those types of things? <laughs> um, I still remember that one home run I found on Twitter and reposted, and you had no drip around the bases. Well, I told you that when you're hitting like a buck 80 and you're playing like shit, yeah, if you smoke a ball, which I smoked that ball, I am not pimping that thing because I didn't deserve the right. If I'm hitting 300, then yeah, maybe I yeah. would. Maybe I would be feeling a little bit better. But my mo, Zach, be there, like, or act like you've been there before, Zach. No, not you. Yeah, I was gonna say I do the one eye celly when I walk in slow pitch softball, so that's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the person to be asking for. Uh, yeah, my teammates will yeah, the number of doubles that I've turned into singles because I've celebrated mm -hmm. on my way to first is unreal. <laughs> so. I can totally see it. I can totally see that. Yeah. Ball in the gap. I'm giving the bench the one eye celly. I'm like, oh yeah, no, dude. I got also nine. Then so I call for a pinch runner. Yeah, that's that. All all of it makes sense. You bring about 19 memories for me, Jeff. But in 19, <laughs> also, so I hit 333 uh, to start off. They got hurt. They hit like a buck 60 coming back for like a month and a half. I'm like, this is the end of my I career. Felt, and I, I felt bad, man, because yeah. you were you were like you were like the nicest guy. I I could be because in the minors you do a million things. Like I would do broadcasting. I did marketing. I did, you did PR. Everything. I literally did everything, and I'd walk in there. I'm like. I got to talk to somebody for like 12 or 13 minutes because I'm going to spend this entire pregame show just filling out my book and maybe looking up how to say this guy's name in left field who I've never seen before. Um, and and you were like always the person I could go to to talk to. And and I just felt so bad because you were like, you were doing really well and then the whole oblique thing comes along and it was just just really. Unfair. Yeah, o OB, the OB happened and then yeah. uh, a, a night out in Wilmington and uh, shaving off the beard and an interesting comment I had from our former hitting coordinator and whammy <laughs> I we went to Lynchburg and I had eight hits in three games and um, mm -hmm. I hit like 290 for that next month and I got called up to double A mm -hmm. I got back on track things were good mm -hmm. um, and that was that so that was fun but the other part I was thinking about talking about being uh why I don't celebrate Zach going into second for a double this was bad I was pissed I hit a rocket at Salem against the Red Sox so it's a high A I and it has a double wall and <sighs> and I hit that ball hit that puppy I remember 109 off the bat I hit it right off the wall the guy catches it off with his bare hand I'm like you are not about to throw me out at second base Cannon. Bear, Cannon hoses me <laughs> by like two steps. And I'm like, yeah, and I get in the dugout. Um, did you slide or did you give up? No, I slid. Head I, first? No. I would have no. moved. No, I, I slid, but I got back and, and rest in peace, Ryan Miner. I love Miner. Ryan O is like 
Still got, still got the anvils in, but it's okay. You know, when I got <laughs> back to the, got the point, anvils, was, he, he coached third, but after it, after it, he, he told me after, he's like, it's okay. He goes, man, yeah. Goes, uh, Did you get the go from the coach? Uh, oh hell yeah. Oh, then that's not on you. Well, well, but you uh -huh. know, it, it it sucked. I'll tell you yeah. that it was terrible. Um, Jeff, we appreciate you being in. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. We, Ryan Ripken Show, we appreciate the positive comments here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a ton about the Orioles during the season. We do like to have some other comments. And Greg, I'm glad you're able to tune in. Greg says, first time being able to catch one of these streams. Have loved mm -hmm. Ryan's analysis for a long time. Let's go O's. Really appreciate that. Well, if you love my analysis, you should check out Rocco and I early tomorrow from 7 to 9. We are going to be at the hip together. You're still uh, muted, by the way. But I got gotcha. you. There he is. <laughs> oh my goodness, the man, the myth, Jeff. That's fantastic. Jeff, <laughs> he's making an appearance. The, 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 the no. man, the man, the myth. Wow. Yeah, yeah. the man, that, the myth. That, no that, legend. That, that would no be a first. That would be a first. Yeah, we, we have we actually, go. Jeff. We have we have another Jeff. That's our director. Yeah. It does the same spelling as well. He just walked in. Oh too. wow! And you Both also like, are. Is, is he? A, you, is he? Is he a G off? Is he a, he is a, a do you guys call him G off? He is a G off. He is a G off. Uh -huh. he's, he's a G off. Oh yeah. my goodness. That's I'm, I'm called uncle, I'm called Uncle G off at home. So it's actually <laughs> it's it's okay. I just I just embrace it. I, I just call him G off. It. So it's it is uh, what it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amazing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We we you know what? We love the Jeffs with the G E. That's mm -hmm. what we love, right? G off G off, right? Well, oh yeah. G E O. I mean, or, yeah. or, is, or is Jim or is Jim Palmer likes to say Joff. Like he just likes to say Joff. Just rolls it, all, just rolls it all together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just likes Joff. So yeah. it's kind of like Joff, Joffrey. Joffrey. Yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say that. Yeah. yeah. Sounds Actually, like pretentious. Like yeah. there's Joff. I, I went, I was <laughs> I was down in we were we were visiting this place that for this wedding. It's what are we doing at this place? It was it's like the the farewell brunch, and we go to meet with this person. We we pull it and we walk into the hotel and they said, uh, it's like Joff. I'm like, close. <laughs> close, close. No, I did say. That. I did say. That. I was like, I, there's. I'm just kind of at the point where I'm desensitive to it. Just, yeah. just let yeah. it go. Just let it go. Just, just let, let it go. go. Everyone, just let relax. it go. Everyone's let okay. It go. Yeah. You know what? Everyone. Um, a couple things for us. I get called Cal Junior Junior. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, um, uh, who's the comedian? Why am I blanking on this? His name. Uh, Stavro, Stavi. Yeah, Stavi. Stavi said Cal Ripken Jr. Jr. I'm like, that, that's uh, funny because people would just would call me Cal Jr. Jr. <laughs> like, actually, it's funny. On the birth certificate, it's Ryan. Like, no, you're Cal Jr. Jr. <laughs> no. But and the mm. other thing. Not is, how that works, but I like it. This know. was the other thing that gets me. Is everyone, we know everything about your. I know every single thing about your family. I'm like, fantastic. Uh, and then they'd go to show me something and they would continue to spell my last name wrong. Uh -huh. R-I-P-K-I-N. Oh, the I. And I go, yeah. you know everything about my family except one letter. That needs to be changed. So uh, it's uh, it, that's the way the cookie yeah, crumbles well, with it. You know, my I'm the same way, Jeff, with my last name. It's uh -huh. Ostriker, and it's the O E at the beginning. People just give I up actually, and say I Ostrich. actually, I actually, I saw, I saw your thing before. I'm like, wait a minute, like that's actually, maybe, maybe it's just an occupational hazard, but Ostriker, it's not as that's not as yeah. hard as you think. Well, people think it's you know they get the American Pie reference. And uh -huh, so that's where exactly. they have it. Maybe, maybe but, that's uh, why. We, we do have a commenter in here who, oh. who is, uh, he likes to give my last name. So he has Kevin Oyster Striker or Oyster Shucker. Oh. Uh, Automatopia, that's organic my produce farmer. It's like it's like it's like, for, it's like from uh, it's like rookie of the year. Uh, it's yeah. like <laughs> roasted bagger, yeah, literally. garden hoser. Yeah, literally. That's literally a new. Yeah, so that's my favorite. For that, my favorite is Kevin Automatopia. Yeah. That's yeah. without it's, a doubt. That is awesome. So, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got some really. We got some great people in the comments. So if you're on YouTube, by the way, we love this community in here. And Patrick, appreciate you. Love the show, Ryan. Well, we we, we love that you are tuning in right back. And Stackhouse is actually in the oh, building. Oh, yeah, there Kevin. he is, Stackhouse. Oh, yeah. The, the man, the, the other man, the myth that is going out there <laughs> and uh, and making all those nicknames. Well, hey, we'll, we'll wrap up here because we know we got a long day for everyone. But before we go, Jeff, before mm -hmm. we go, yeah. let's just talk about a little bit of prediction here. Um, if... Gunnar Henderson is not – Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman get the most recognition. Let's just do your mm -hmm. prediction. Another Oriole that you think is going to be in for a big year. It can be he's not on the team yet. Mm -hmm. It can be a current guy on the team that you think deserves more credit or that really is going to shine and be a star here in 2024, however you want to take it. It's a, it's a tough one because as, as you're saying that, I'm kind of like thinking in a – in a couple of different directions. I would say that 
somebody who's going to be a star that we're going to see at some point is going to be Jackson Holiday, and I don't mm-hmm. think that's that's no surprise yeah. to anybody. So I'm 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 not going to just stop there. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit farther. But I think Jackson Holiday has all the tools to be a great major league player for a very long period of time. I talked about his poise like right out of the gate, but the offensive ability. I think trying to make a team at 20 years old while making a position change. I don't think people realize just how extraordinarily yeah. hard that is because when you're like when you're turning a double play at second base your back is turned so you're mm-hmm. literally catching it blind and you got somebody coming in on you it's just so hard to do and, and i think maybe to a degree with jackson was i saw him play a handful of games i think i did nine or ten spring training games some of it just felt like he never got a lot of chances to do the type of things that you really get judged on when it comes to playing mm-hmm. second base and the type of things that are your barometer for, yes, he's ready, no, he's not. And and I just never felt like he got a lot of those opportunities, which is just kind of luck of the draw when you yeah. when yeah. you think about it. But he's going to be a great major league player whenever he arrives, and and who knows, maybe he's going to be another uh, rookie of the year. And then you know you talked about Jordan Westberg. Westberg is a favorite of mine. I, I, I I'm not sure if you, if if we do this in life, but there are times where I'm just like, I, I have thought this. I was like, if I was an Orioles player. Who would I be? And I guess more often than not, I think Jordan Westberg is maybe that mm. kind of guy who just grinds it out, really gets locked in. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the videos of Ben McDonald like scaring me when I get oh, locked yeah. in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Cra- cra- Fantastic. You know, like a like a snake, like six foot eight crawling up and like getting ready to <laughs> bite my ankles because I'm like too locked in. I, that happens to me. I could see that happen to somebody like Jordan Westberg too. Like I, yeah. he, he just kind of strikes me as that person. But, I think he's got a ton of talent. I, I think that his defense at, at third base was something I was impressed by last year. He can play second really well. He can play third really well. A lot of offensive potential. Just a just a really good player who I, as you said, Ryan, earlier, I don't think his, has kind of scratched just how good he can be. Uh, hey, we're on the same page, and I know mm-hmm. a lot of people are waiting for Jackson Holiday. We mentioned mm-hmm. that, but Jordan Westberg was a guy when I watched Met him and spent time with him in 2021 coming out of COVID. Mm-hmm. I just I love his demeanor and watching him on the backfields too. A guy that doesn't get enough respect personally for me because defensively, Joey Ortiz is a stud defensively when mm-hmm. he was also with the Orioles. But I look at it and I go, West, he makes all the plays. He does so many different yeah. things playing third. He does play short. He can play short, play second base. By the way, really good athlete. And by the way, he's got pop and not just pop around the field. He has juice the other way, and I think that that's going to play a big part of his game in 2024. And I think that he's confident that he's going to go out there and be really good. I even heard a comment about him saying, Jeff, he goes, he loves all the guys, but he's trying to win a job. He's trying to stay here long term. Oh, yeah. And and that's the like that's what they bring out the best. But Westy has that kind of mindset where I'm looking like, damn, this dude to me, really, there's a lot of people that can be X factors on the team. I think that Jordan Westberg is one of those guys that I wouldn't I would not be surprised at all if Westberg messed around and got close to, got close or could be a future all-star. Or not like this year, I don't know. I'm hoping he could mess yeah. around. Mm-hmm. Future, I think Jordan Westberg can be an all-star player. I really do. I think he's that good. So um any other thoughts here? Also, I gotta shout out my mom here for a second. My mom's oh, all shout out, of man. course. Gotta shout out Kelly. Um, and she was seeing in, in some ways, Jeff, it's it's Strange for my mom, where she saw uh, Tim Kirchin on and mm-hmm. Rick and um, Mike Bordick, and when I was a kid, well, some of those guys, right? Rick, she knew Rick way back in the day before I was born, but you know, Bordy, Tim, Rick, and all this, and now we're doing things together in a different light. It's it's kind of crazy. It's surreal for me too, Mom. I, I will say it's uh, who would have thought, and who would have thought today that we were going to be at Camden Yards talking to the new owner of the Orioles, and that the Orioles going into 2024 after the last five years, are going to try to repeat in the AL East. Just a lot of these moments right now, Jeff. It's just crazy. It's uh, just like Gwen Stefani likes to say, that this is bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> and by the, way, by the way, I want to ask you this. When you did the interview, mm-hmm. and, and that's, a, that's a really interesting spot to be in. Not a whole lot of people get to do interviews like that, like in, a, in an intimate setting. Like how nervous were you when, oh. when you did it? Well... Uh, good thing it was recorded initially because I couldn't get <laughs> Orioles and owner out the right way for the first like, <laughs> yeah. we, two we, takes. We there were no strikeouts. There was only two strikes. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. so I was, I was 0-2 fighting for my life 
scratching and clawing, and then I just hit a road. <laughs> Came to through left in the center. clutch. Came through in the clutch. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate it. But you know, it was really cool. It was just because mm-hmm. of understanding the desire of and the passion that they both have. And mm-hmm. so for all that and knowing my dad, it helps. Obviously, I can understand right. how he works. But being able to do this, the reason why we started this, Jeff, I told you this yeah. when we got uh, lunch the other day, was I wanted the opportunity to work on my skills. And I felt by working with everyone here, with with you, with uh, Zach and Kevin, mm-hmm. and again, I'm going to say something really nice about Rocco. He may not listen, but working with Rocco the last year. The way he just he, immediately he turned was, his camera on and joined the show. In. You said that he literally turned. Have love, Doug. He said, "I'm going to say something nice about Rocco." And Rocco just turned his head and immediately joined the screen. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, but right. it's true. Rocco and I started this as far as far as for him and I going on TV, which we're doing tomorrow from seven to nine on Fox mm-hmm. 45. So if you're looking for a little bit of fun, come watch us then. But it was starting with him, and it was both of us were the same age and trying to figure things out. We do some stuff on rip and rock the podcast as well. And then we do all the stuff here. So I felt like going into this, I felt prepared Mm -hmm. to ask questions and it was really comfortable. You know what I love? And I think people will love in this interview, Mm -hmm. Jeff, is that David Rubenstein is people. I I saw some comment on X. They go, man, for a billionaire, he's just seems so down to earth and humble. And you know what? It's honestly like what I was going to say. I I've watched some of the, the interviews that he's done on Bloomberg, and that is exactly how he comes across. I haven't gotten to meet him yet. Hopefully, will soon. But just seems like a regular guy who's just a big Orioles fan. Like yeah. it's just that's just what it seems like, and that's and that's rare. But but you can just tell how much this means to him. It, it does, and so um, and I, mom, yeah, my mother asked Kelly Ripkin. Shout out again to to Kelly, I, the llama. I call it her nickname's the llama in our household. Mm-hmm. When does the interview go out, and where can viewers see it? The interview is actually to go out probably thirty minutes after the show. Oh wow! It's, it's, it's out all tonight. That's, well, I have the big. I've been editing pretty much the whole time. Yeah, so I have Kevin's been grinding. Big old, big old headphones on. So <laughs> serious. Some fu- ser- Kevin, some serious multitasking. Going I, yeah, oh, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've serious tried. Serious multitasking. Yeah. So the, the the files there. Uh, we're gonna get it up. Yeah, probably about thirty minutes after. That's so, cool. Yeah, that's very cool. We're, 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 we're definitely going to do that. And it's great. And, and the thing that I um, what I was trying to finish with is I think people are going to realize in this interview is that despite all the success mm-hmm. that a person like David Rubenstein's had, and, and that was the comment I was mentioning. Oh, well, he's so humble for being a quote unquote billionaire. He doesn't look at money as as that money's allowed, obviously, for other things, but that's because of the successes and the relationships and what he's been able to mm-hmm. build professionally yeah. on a personal level. He cares about the community. He cares mm-hmm. about the everyday fan. And you're seeing the notes about what they're going to have for first pitches, what he wants to do in the community, and, and his message. He wants to make this the city of Baltimore proud. He wants to continue on the legacy that the Baltimore Orioles have had in Baltimore since mm-hmm. they came in 1954. And... I think you guys are going to enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. He's he's witty. He he's he's sharp. hilarious. He's yeah. He is really funny. And really. the other thing I noticed, he's he's a really funny guy. Yeah, he's quick he's really, too. Really he, he got rip on one. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. I, I didn't even know what the hell to say. He, yeah, it, it was a very much like he, uh-huh. Ryan had to laugh a little bit. That's that so had to suppress the laugh. Well, it, it, it was all it was all in in good conversation. It was awesome. Yeah, you know what? So and and in other cases, I'm trying to feel it out. I think next time we have an opportunity to do more, uh, I'll be able to joke with him a little bit more. And then if it's just my dad and I, the, the gloves are off. He's done. I I <laughs> they were already <laughs> kind. They're kind of off. Yeah, already I was gonna say the gloves were uh, getting little, off. Little little, 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 little little slight jabs. Yeah, they're funny jabs. Funny uh, jabs. It was awesome. Yeah, a little right. bit of little bit of jab jab uh sean merriman would probably uh hate my <laughs> boxing style by do the not way. show him yeah sean merriman former uh linebacker for the chargers maryland product jeff mm-hmm. he came on and, and zach tried to do a boxing thing <laughs> and he told me i'd get my ass whooped. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he just said yep you see that's gonna get your ass whooped <laughs> well, you know probably a first in my life that i've had an nfl uh-huh. pro tell me that i was gonna get my ass whooped but Put the put the put May- the white belt on yeah. there, pal. Yeah, May- maybe not the last though. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say probably not the last, but it was the first time. Uh-huh. Yeah, a lot, lot, a lot of good kids here. Um, hey guys, I think we should wrap up so everyone can get ready for ten or tomorrow. And yes, the weather, it's kind of up in the air. We're gonna see what happens if the game is rained out tomorrow. It's gonna be on Friday. It's and it looks like it's a clear day Friday, but rain's supposed to clear up by mm-hmm. the afternoon. But I'll tell you what, if it's rain or shine, Birdland's gonna be buzzing. People are going to be oh, yeah. out there right now. 
Um, and uh, this comment right here, safe to assume the interview will be on Ryan's YouTube channel. Yes. yes. The interview is going to be on this channel in the next 30 minutes. So and it gonna- is. It's like 15 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. it's fif- about 1540. Yep. So. so it's a it's incredible conversation. Ryan did an incredible job. You know, I will give him his flowers. It was a fantastic Great interview. interview. And you know what? And if also, we're, we hope to do more with that. We hope to do more with people in the community. It just got like guys like Jeff. And this is why, Jeff, I'm so glad you're on because you fit in so well. You're an awesome guy. You're a great guy. But also, we're going to do this again. I appreciate I, is it. Is this okay? Can we do this again? I, I would love to do it again. You guys are you, you guys are great. I'm just <laughs> oh, kind of, yeah. I'm just, I'm still amazed by Kevin, the fact that he's taking part in this conversation, but it, he is also <laughs> like furiously editing I over am, here. Yeah, we've, That's we've not easy to shorts. do. I appreciate that. It's that. not it, easy to do. I will say there were, I, I think the first two guests, Kevin, was it couldn't hear no, I, I had the headphones plugged into the computer i couldn't take part in the interview because you know and I then was, but was rocco the show. rocco was making a comment so i was like kind of relaying what rocco was saying to <laughs> kevin and kevin hear. would <laughs> make a comment and then he'd just go i can't hear what he's saying because you know in studio it's like you know i can talk to you jeff because you're, you're uh-huh. right here but sure. Ro- rocco who is not with us in person if, if my it's like it's like it's like broadcasting mad libs in, in a way, in a way. <laughs> it's like yeah <laughs> And you know what? And this is a great that we we've had. I'm curious with numbers. Is the show the the record for people of coming on here has been fantastic. And I think mm-hmm. that it, this is what we love, and this is why we want to bring more of these people together. We're going to talk more about other sports when the time comes, but always because of the season, because of what people love, we will have a lot of Orioles, and we're going to have people that mm-hmm. youth. But we believe not only do we want to showcase them, like guys like Jeff, that have great insight and fit right in, but this is what the community is about continuing to build something special that's our goal here so jeff what let's give jeff a round of applause here absolutely guys. hey absolutely. Thanks, th- thanks for the invite and um look forward to doing it again soon Hell yeah, yeah for well, sure well, yes. guess it's what? awesome I, I guess in this case should jeff just be a part of our sign off at the same time oh yeah i, I think, think, it, at this I think point, it, he it, doesn't it, even know um and for those that know uh i, I just point this out the last thing what other sports we're going to talk like Maryland base is probably where we're going to talk the most about. That's always where we're going to come back to. So when football with the Ravens, mm-hmm. we have connections. We have more coming up with that in the future. So stay tuned. But then also we're going to talk around what's happening in the Maryland region, go down even to D.C., Maryland sports, including college, but also spicy topics like the NFL rules changed recently. We're going to talk about that. Something crazy happened out there. We're going to talk about Otani, the situation there. Any baseball news, we are going to talk about it. But make no mistake, we will still do our due diligence like we are to have Orioles content, and we will even make special shows out of it like we do tonight. That is a Ryan Ripken show guarantee. All right, get ready for that. Get ready for that uh, David Rubenstein, Calvary yes. Jr. exclusive interview, which will be out probably in the next 30 minutes. And, guys, it is time to cue the music. All right. As we get ready to get on out of here. It's the most basic music. <laughs> Every time gets me. Well, that does it for everyone here at the Ryan Ripken Show. We thank you for tuning in. Hit that like and subscribe button on the way out. Opening day is here, everyone. Enjoy your opening day festivities. And as always, have a day, have a night. We'll see you for another episode of the Ryan Ripken Show. Peace. Ooh.